think I think that means we're live. Hey. It has been a while since we have been virtual on the internet. Oh my goodness. Uh welcome in everyone to uh Blackwater D&D and our Triangle Agency mini series The Right Angle. I am your general manager for this evening and I'm really excited to bring you this um, fantastic t indie TTRPG release um to this channel from our dear friends at Haunted Table. Um I'm going to get quickly through some announcements here so we can just dive in and, and welcome our guests. But if you haven't visited the Triangle Agency Kickstarter, what are you even doing? Go do that like right now. Um, it's a narratively focused paranormal investigation, corporate horror, and sci-fi fantasy created by uh, Caleb Zane Hewitt and Sean Island. I know Caleb is here in the chat right now. Thank you, Caleb. Um, you're the best, and I adore you. Um, all of the amazing art uh, from the character arc um, and all of this stuff, uh, the stuff that you see in the break sequence is their Kickstarter video, um, and all the art inside, the field, uh, the field agent guy, the general manager's guide, and the vault handbooks is so beautiful, and they've just absolutely obliterated so many stretch goals um so they are going to be having so much good art so please go back this fantastic kickstarter now it ends july 5th um and this lovely mini series is the first of three episodes um of course three of course uh so we're going to be airing them wednesdays here at 8 p.m pacific standard time um and the kickstarter in the chat is exclamation point triangle um, okay, so I am going to acknowledge that we are streaming tonight from the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish, uh, Squamish, Stolo, and Musqueam peoples. And while this story takes place in Turnian City, it is an honor to live, work, and play on these lands tonight. Big thank you to Adam for running tech. We love you, Adam. And a huge shout out to our campaign artist, uh, Kelsey. You can find her at Rogue uh, Uzu on Twitter. So thank you for bringing these beautiful characters to life. Um, and our main campaign, if you're interested in other stuff that we do here on the channel, airs at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come join us for like a really high fantasy fun game that we play live in studio. It's pretty awesome. Okay. So that's the first order of business. There will be much business yet to come. So we're going to get acquainted with our field agents for the evening. Uh, Tim and Cody from here at Blackwater. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, can you share your name and pronouns uh, and tell me each something about the very first job you worked, please. Uh, Cody, why don't you go first? Or hi, uh, my name is Cody. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. And the very first job uh, I worked, um, real life or the character? Real life. Your real, real life. life. The, mm -hmm. Oh, the very first job I worked was, yeah. um, oh, I worked at a Johnny Rockets. It's a burger chain that like specializes in like mm -hmm. 50s kind of theme. Yeah, and so amazing. I wore like a little <laughs> sailor's hat. And uh, at least once an hour, I'd have to do the hand drive to Rock and Robin. Um, oh and no so, oh wow that's yeah amazing. so that was um that was a fun year yeah <laughs> we love that thank you for being here cody and tim hey i'm tim i use he him pronouns my first job was a uh a theater camp counselor when i was 15 uh for very small children uh and it was a great time and every week we put on a performance and it was ridiculous because <laughs> i had to write the scripts and it was very fun yeah. amazing and welcoming uh, we have three wonderful guests joining us here some new and, and some returning as well um so welcoming back the most delightful pond pond what was your oh. very first job that you Heck. ever worked Hi, I'm Pond. My pronouns are they, them. And the first job I ever worked was I was a sandwich artist at Subway in high school. And uh, it was... It was artistry, you know? Just Absolutely. It was those a footlongs. Food and, artistry. Uh, yes. uh, we had the little cheat sheets in the back. And the benefits of the job were that you got a free... Oh, no, I'm sorry. You got a 50% off sub uh, when you Only were 50 on the clock. off? Yeah, it wasn't even free. No, you had to pay for it. America, baby. Yeah. What, a di oh what a discount. God. What a discount. Yeah. What a discount. Terrible. Amazing. Well, I'm very glad you're here, Pond. Thanks for being back on the channel and welcoming to the channel uh, for, uh, for a campaign for the first time. And we're so happy to have you. Hi. Hello. Um, uh, hi. Can you share everyone your pronouns? And what was your first job? Uh, I'm Anne. I use they, she. And my, okay, when you say first job, first job or first job that paid me, they are different. Oh, you, player's choice. Okay, whatever my you, first whatever job you was working 
at my mom's small business at a gift shop where I had to wrap Christmas gifts. I was 12 and very bad at wrapping and uninvested in this. Um, so honestly, maybe it's fair that I never got paid. I, did. <laughs> I really, I was, I was a hundred percent convinced that every present looked best. If you just took a bunch of tissue paper and went like around it and then tied it at the top. And I thought it looked, they all look like pineapples. Yes. And I was course. like, pineapple wrapping is the look. The kid, the, they're all, everyone's crazy about it. And they're like, no one is crazy about it. <laughs> Nobody wants this. Amazing. Well, I'm very excited to have you here. This. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And last but certainly not least, welcome back, Faye. Hi. Yes. Hello. Um, I am Faye. Yes. Good. I was like, I don't know what name I'm supposed to say <laughs> right now. I'm so bad at intros. There are many names. Ever. Many names that you have. <laughs> There's so many names. It's too many. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. And the first job that I ever worked was um, I was a cashier in a grocery store. Uh, which I then very quickly actually moved into cash accountability, which for the uninitiated is basically like um, counting out all of the registers and yeah. making sure that everything's like even and like putting all the money in the vault. I was 16 um, and they were like, you're responsible enough for Absolutely that. Absolutely responsible so enough for this. That's fine. Yes. And then I trained people who were like twice my age at it later. It was an experience. So that was my first job. <laughs> Amazing. Well, okay, this Unreli- Go ahead, Anne. moderately Go ahead. related, but I worked as a cashier at one point and, um, I accidentally went to work drunk one day, not on purpose because I was still drunk the morning after being yes. out. And I was like, Oh heck, I can't skip work. What do I do? So I had a friend drive me cause I'm responsible and I will work as a cashier drunk, but I will not drive drunk. Um, so, <laughs> um, and that was the only time in my entire career as a cashier that my tail balanced at the end of the day. Beautiful. I the do- more, you know, Better at math. I think that day. alcohol cures my dyscalculia. Like I think <laughs> I can do math drunk. We love this. I You're like, know. I have a little bit to drink, and I suddenly become a math gay. It's great. And <laughs> we always, and we always want everyone to go into work with the best advantages possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stop. It wasn't worth it. I was also hungover for the second half of my shit. <laughs> know your strengths, Amazing. know your weaknesses. Um, my name is M. Um, I use Faye and she pronouns. I am your general manager for this evening. Uh, your GM, your general manager, uh, which is the best. Um, so as a caveat, I'm also going to let you know that this game involves corporate horror and kind of horror more generally. So please take care of yourself if you need to. Our cast employs safety tools at the table that we use consistently. And there's never harm for you as a viewer stepping away if you need to. Um, You'll also notice in this game that I don't play all of the NPCs, which is really wonderful. It's a mechanic that's built right into this game. So some of our players will be actually playing important NPCs in their player characters' lives, which is really, really rad. Um, So that being said, grab your D4s and anything triangular around you and let's clock in for the right angle. Roll that clip, Adam. Roll the clip. Roll the clip.
We are back. Okay. So my sweet, sweet agents, welcome to the first job of the rest of your life. I'm going to remind you to keep on top of your commendations and your demerits. We go by an honor system here, which is conveniently attached to the demerits department. Um, and also because I can, I'm giving myself six chaos because corporate bureaucracy isn't fair. So you're just going to have to deal with that. Um, okay. So agents, we find ourselves in the midst of a beautiful autumn day in Turnian City a vast metropolis of shining metal and glass, buildings lining, bustling streets with people of all kinds going about their day. As we wind through the streets of this city, out of the corner of our eye, we catch the glimpse of an impossible angle of a building, jutting out amidst an odd intersection that to the untrained and unassuming eye lies empty. This center point of Turnian City houses the agency, a set of three imperceivably tall buildings arranged and connected with geometry and engineering that is beyond what normal human eyes can entertain. And it is here that we begin our mission. As we step into the agency doors, we are welcomed with regulated imagery highlighted in bright white, deep red, and a rich purple. There are pictures of smiling people everywhere, and outside of the agency, no one is actually really sure that the agency exists, much less what goes on in there, and why would we ever ask questions about that? So as we enter in, we reach in the lobby of the agency where there is a large television playing a children's program. It seems to be an episode of Princess Honeycake, which is a popular TV show that has the heroine, Princess Honeycake, moving throughout her day, teaching lessons to the children that watch, and standing stock still in front of the television, absolutely enraptured. Anne, who do we see standing there? You see Sokotoa, known to her friends as Soso. Soso is a sentient AI who has gained presence. It used to be spyware, not anymore, don't worry. Um, she does have some little glitches. Her hands don't render quite well, so she's wearing mittens. And she hasn't quite figured out how this whole corporeal thing works. So she likes to just indulge in her own little ways. Very excited about the new things like eating. She's currently snacking on an entire cup of boba, but it only has boba and no tea. And she eats it like popcorn while watching the television just transfixed. All of her eyes that are glitching out off the side of her face are right on the television. Amazing. And she's just mouthing along with everything Princess Honeycake says. So you've seen this episode of Princess Honeycake many times and so Sokotoa or Soso, as you often go by, uh, what is it about Princess Honeycake that you love so much? Princess Honeycake teaches us important life lessons, like how to be good to our friends and also how to work hard at our goals in life. Amazing. And and for the wonderful folks at home, what are your character pieces that you're playing this evening? Um, so Sokotoa is an her anomaly type is dream. Uh, her reality is newborn. So she's got the Lilu multipass energy, we brand new baby. Um, and as such, she is the intern. Amazing. Because she does not know anything, does not know ABCs, only knows Princey, Princess Honeycake and Boba. As one does. And too many eyes. <laughs> too many eyes. So you are standing in front of the television and all of a sudden you realize that you're starting to flicker and blip in and out of existence and all of a sudden you you end up in the IT department. Deep in the basement, you found yourself that. in the server room. And Avery Kipplesnap is there, and he looks worried. Um, Avery is played by Tim. Uh, and so, so Avery normally only blips you here when they've made a mistake that they need your help fixing. Any idea what that mistake could be today? Why has Avery brought, brought you here? Oh, you're asking me? Yes. Why do you think Avery has um, flipped you down here? So, so, so just like leans over Avery's shoulder and goes, Avery, it looks like the lights on the screen on your computer are not where they are supposed to be. 
Uh, so Avery, you see Soso blip in. Uh, Tim, can you describe Avery, please? And I'll let you fill uh, Soso in on what's going on and why you've uh, blipped them down here. Uh, Avery, um, they their hair kind of comes down over their eyes a little bit, very disheveled, a bit of a five o'clock shadow, um, wearing clothes that uh, are very stylish, but also very wrinkled. And there's like a lot of care to look like they don't care. Um, and they're like spinning a, a pen in their finger. Yeah. Amazing. And so I'll let you and uh, Soso have a conversation here about what, why you've blipped Soso down here. Usually Soso comes down to fix your problems. Why, why did you bring Soso down here? Uh, yeah. Hey, Soso. Um... Hello, Avery. Yeah, it's just that, um, look, there's all these lights kind of blinking on my computer, and I think maybe it's your fault, so, like, if you could maybe fix it, that would be awesome. I tried to exit out of a this, like, game I was playing, and then my computer started freaking out, so. Which game were you playing? Uh, that's not important. That's, it's really none of, it's not anything, it's, it, it was Minesweeper, Okay. I'm going for a speed run. Closing record. Minesweeper made your computer. And Soso's just going to kind of like blip over to the other side of the room. Be like, why is the server rack bleep bleeping? Why is it making sounds too? Yeah, I don't, that's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It's weird. That just started happening. I don't think it's related. I think that's probably something else. Mm -hmm. So like, mm -hmm. if you want to take a look, you can, but like, I'll probably deal with it later. All right. I will try to fix it. Don't worry, friend. I am here to support you because friendship is very important. Yeah. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I don't know if this is so much a skill I have. I'm just going to try and commune with the computer. Yeah. I used to be spyware. I'm not anymore, but I still haven't quite figured out how it works. So I'm just going to like be like, mm, and try to just. I Talk love to the this. computer. Okay, amazing. I'm actually going to have you um, roll for a skill check here. I'm just going to try and, yeah, I'm going to probably have you roll. You know what? You're kind of trying to force your way into this system and try and force yourself like to fix the problem. I'm going to have you roll dynamism, please. Um, so you're going to roll 64. Oh no. Do you have anything okay, in dynamism? Mm, no. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm so not you're gonna... very pushy. <laughs> so you're gonna roll with now burnout. question yes answer. this is an important question M, um which is do you think eating boba like popcorn constitutes a rejection of rule or custom of society in an obvious way yeah i absolutely do i can i absolutely do so yes! if that is your burnout release i will say that you are released from burnout <laughs> so you need to roll 64 for dynamism and add one three or you, your goal is one three Oh, I got two threes. Amazing. So I do take four chaos from that. So um, yeah, you are That's able. Good. That is good, but I still do get chaos from that. So, you know, it happens. Um, you, you force your way into this system and you are able to close the programs uh, that seem to be causing uh, a blip. Um, you see that Avery actually um, has tried to hide a bunch of gaming software in the agency's programming um, so that he gets, or so that they get access to a bunch of games for free. Um, and they're using, he's, you know, they're manipulating the servers so that they can access all of these uh, really old and uh, not actually yet released games for free. So you recognize that while you're in there. And that's what's causing the server dysfunction. Cool. Are you almost done? Cause like, uh, I just kind of like want to get back to my speed run. So. Like if if you could like get out of here, that'd be great. Okay, I'm just gonna like stick my head out of the server rack and say, Avery, some of these emulators are stored in public folders. You would be much better hiding them over here. They'll be uh, less likely to be found by your colleagues. Uh yeah, no, unless I will, you I are hosting a game night. Mm, I, I don't I I don't hiding? I wouldn't I would never I would never hide any games anywhere. Princess no Honeycake always not, says that's... it's important to share your toys with your friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Honeycake. 
Amazing. So, 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 uh, do you move those files, uh, into a more private server rather than in the public domain for Avery? Yes, I'm going to, I help Avery against their will all the time. Amazing. Um, so I am going to start like hiding the files and cause I know like where the spyware stuff, but like the confidential yes. files are all stored. That's that's the one part of the system I know intimately. Um, so anything that was shared in a public thing, um, except my favorite game, um, which is Cookie Clicker. Yeah. And uh, that one I'm leaving in the public folder because I want to be able to play it too. And I Wonderful. think we should all get to play. And that is such an easy task for you uh, as a part of this mainframe. I'm not going to even make you roll for it. Um, so as you are finishing up, you see, um, as you're in the server itself, you see a message flash across your field of vision, uh, asking for your presence up in the executive wing. Uh, a supervisor, Trina, who you've never heard of before, is requesting your assistance. And this is really, really odd to you. Uh, you're an intern. And up to this point, you're pretty sure that Avery was the only one that knew you were no longer part of the mainframe. Um, so yeah, um, you've been requested to come up to the office. While I'm in the secret files area, I'd like to check the HR files to see if there's anything on Trina. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so you go to access uh, the uh, HR files, uh, and you are I have strongly you are strongly rebuffed. It is one of the <gasps> most complex firewalls you have ever seen. I used to be a firewall. Hmm. So yeah, there is no accessing that at this point with your level of competency and clearance. All right. Um, I'm going to pop my head out and say, Avery, I hit all your files. Goodbye. Um, and then I'll hop over to Trina. <laughs> Amazing. Do you travel through uh, the mainframe or do you walk there? I, okay, I think I have like a druidic tree stride, but only yeah. for like networked computers. Wonderful. Like they can't, I cannot travel over Wi-Fi, unfortunately, tragically. Okay. But if they are hardwired, I can move around the building. <laughs> Okay, you find that the closest available computer uh, is a secretary outside of Trina's office. So do you just pop um, out of that one? Okay. Yes. Okay, so as you pop out of this computer, the secretary goes, um, oh, oh, um, huh. Hello. Hello. Uh, are you here for an appointment? I don't know. I was summoned here. My name is So-So. What is your name? Uh... You know, my, my name is not important. I'm going to, I'll just, you can go. It's can lovely to meet you. Not important. Every day I make new friends. I am here to make another new friend. Her name is Trina. A friend? Good luck with that. Uh, and the assistant, uh, this, the receptionist opens the door to uh, supervisor Trina's office and you head inside. Okay. So from there, we shift our attention back down to the lower levels of the agency and we weave our way through the halls and we go past a janitorial-esque office and we see a room that has a bunch of lockers in it. Standing at a locker, sorting through their things and getting ready to cl clock in, Tim, who do we see standing there? Uh, you, uh, you see Dunn Kruger. Um, he's got uh, sort of disheveled blonde hair and a little poustache. And uh, he just got here. He's a little out of breath, um, uh, just on time. And <clears throat> uh, he's uh, just frantically looking for the ring of keys that he was given to open the door to the room with the switches. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, so you know that the switches are an integral part yeah. of your job. Um and that is like the main the main purpose that you have been hired here to do. Um, can you list your character pieces for me, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my anomaly is manifold. My reality is struggling. And my competency is gravedigger. Wonderful. So done. You are standing here and you're about to take your time card and clock in okay. when your phone vibrates oh, in your pocket. Oh, jeez. And oh boy. Uh, you see that it is your Uncle Josh who is uh -oh. going to be played by Pond. Now, you know when it's your Uncle Josh calling that it's likely Jay. something important. What is Uncle Josh likely calling about? Uh, I left. I left the lawnmower in the driveway again. <laughs> and so I didn't mow the lawn. 
you were supposed to mow the lawn. I was and, definitely uh, supposed didn't. to mow the lawn. Yep. Uh, you also know that you're in debt right now. Oh, yeah, big time. To Daryl, Josh's son. Yeah. Uh, do you answer the call when Uncle Josh calls? Well, Uncle Jay, of course I answer the call from Uncle Jay. I love Uncle Jay. All right. I will let you uh, and Uncle Josh have this phone call. Go ahead. Whoa. Hey, Uncle Jay. Good. I'm just a... What do I, what, what's up? What's up? You left the lawnmower in the driveway again. Yeah. Yo, oh, you know, I backed I was... into it with my truck done. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Okay. Well, look, uh, I was going to mow the lawn gonna... for, mm. for Daryl. Um, because mm -hmm. he had like the uh, when... this cool, uh, no, I was going to do it. And then, um, yeah, it's just then I yeah. was, I started sorting my, um, my card packs that look. I got. Done. And I, and yeah, no, 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 just I don't and care then, about your car packs. I, and then I just ran out of time, and then mm -hmm. I, I realized I was going to be late, and I can't, I definitely can't be late for this job. Done. We're going to have yeah. to have a talk when you get home. You understand that, correct? Yeah, sure, Uncle Jay. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got to stick to what you're supposed to do and do it in time. Okay. Yeah, you can't no, say you're going to do something and then not do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah. Just tell, mm -hmm. tell, uh, you know, I'll do it when I get home. Mm -hmm. First thing tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. it, it'll be done before you wake up. Make sure, you, well, well, I'm going to wake up when you turn on the lawnmower if you do it too early. So make sure that you do it at the appropriate time so you don't wake up me or Daryl. Okay, I'll wait. I, you know, I'll stay up and I'll wait. As soon as you wake up, I'll fire that bad boy up, okay? Done. You can sleep. No, no, no. Gotta... I can sleep after. No. It's oh, fine. Oh, Lord. All right. Well, I got to go. The refrigerator's running. So I'm going to. You better go to catch you. it. Uh, damn it. Done. <laughs> and then I'm going <laughs> to. Amazing. So after you end that phone call, uh, Don, you know that it's going to be getting to about the time where you need to go to the room where most of your job takes place. Uh, so you cross the hall to the stairs and you go down another three levels into a concrete room where there are a series of switches on the wall. Your predecessor, uh, Albrecht Dunst, taught yeah. you something about <laughs> these switches, which has now become your job. What mm. did Albrecht teach you? He taught me to flip them in the exact order that he told me every single time. It's got to be in that order or something catastrophic will happen. And it's above my clearance to know what that catastrophic thing is. So just flip the switches in the order. Amazing. Okay. So your job at its core is actually really simple, uh, very precise, uh, but simple. Yeah. So as you enter this room, you are usually in this room alone and you see a femme presenting person in a simple gray suit with her hair tied up in a ponytail uh, and her back is towards you. She is unmoving. Okay, is she in front of the switches? Uh, she's standing off to the side of the room a little bit. Okay, then I'm just going to go right. I'm just going to get to my work. I'm not just not, I'm going to I'm not going to make eye contact. Just going to just go yeah, just straight ahead. Okay. So I'm not going to make you roll to flip your switches. You have done, you know, this job um, and you, you have flipped your switches. I definitely um, know how to do it. Definitely know how to do it. So as you turn around, uh, you finally catch a glimpse of this woman. She's rather average looking. Um, you'd miss her if you saw her in a crowd. She's holding a clipboard and you see that she is wearing a name tag that says personal assistant. Oh, geez. I think maybe you're in the wrong room. The second you speak to her, her head cocks oh, towards you, and she meets your gaze. I definitely don't meet her gaze. I look away. Would you like to book an appointment with Mr. Parker Roy? I don't know who that is. Unfortunately, he's not available until next year. And you see her pull out a calendar, a day timer about this big, and she's holding it in her arms like it is a baby, like it is something that she must protect the most in the world. Also, the initiative order. Thank you for coming in with that raid. Um, she begins flipping through the calendar really, really aggressively. Oh, no, look, I don't want to take up anybody's time. I don't know. You start I don't... seeing a panic in her eyes as she goes back and forth. She is flipping. Papers are starting to fly also everywhere. And she looks up from you from the paper. She's constantly flipping and she goes, please help me. No, I can't. It's, it and she flips the papers faster and faster and faster. And all of a sudden a flurry of papers blind your vision and she is gone. 
oh god i gotta clean up this mess yeah there are papers everywhere around the room okay 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 uh, i guess i gotta i gotta clean up this mess i can't have a, a dirty workstation so as you begin to start cleaning up uh what what has happened here in this room um you hear a little knock uh at the door behind you man this is crazy nobody ever visits me uh, you turn around and you see one of your janitorial colleagues harlan uh oh. stand there oh hey harlan uh hey dunn yeah. uh we just got a work order that's come in for you specifically okay, okay but i gotta clean up this mess first okay uh do you know like a supervisor trina leonard do you know her no i absolutely not Okay, well, she's up in exec, apparently, and she's asked for you to come up. It seems, like, really important. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm... Um, can you watch the switches? You mean, like, just, like, sit and watch them? No, I'm midway through the sequence. Uh... Harlan, do you know the sequence? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you something very important. You gotta do this, Okay. <laughs> Like when do you, when do I gotta do this? You have to pick up the sequence. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what to do. I'm gonna tell you which switches to switch, and you're gonna have to do it. Okay, until I get back. Okay, Harlan, if you do not yeah? do it, and I I go really close when I don't touch him. Oh God! Just if you don't do it, something catastrophic will happen. Well, am I gonna lose my job? Oh, buddy, it's gonna be so much worse than that. I think. Uh, okay, but, like, if I get a work order, I'm gonna have to go do that. Listen, listen, Harlan. If you get a work order, you're gonna, you're just gonna, just gonna, it's gonna have to wait. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And, Harlan? Yeah? Do you have, like, five bucks I could borrow? I'm just, I, I didn't have time to get a snack on the way in, and I'm gonna go buy the vending machines on the way up. So, so I was just wondering if I could have, like, five bucks. So done. Like, you want me to do your job, and you also want me to give you five bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're a crazy son of a bitch, man. And he pulls out a fiver out of his pocket and he passes it to you. This really means a lot, okay? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm gonna write it down. Okay. Switch order, okay? Okay. And I would write down the order of the switches for the rest of the shift. He takes, uh, he's got a cup of coffee in one hand and he takes a quick look at the switches paper and he shoves it in his pocket. Yeah, I'll get, I'll do it, man. Yeah. Okay. I, I would, I would collect the rest of the papers that fell on the floor, kind of put them in a stack on the, like a table near the door. Okay. I put the five bucks in my pocket. Yeah. And then on my way out to the elevators, I would text, uh, Daryl. And be like, hey, take another five bucks off my tab. Amazing. <laughs> okay, so as you head up uh, towards uh, the executive suite, Dunn, you are leaving this wing, this branch of the agency for maybe the first time since you started uh, working here. And as uh, Harlan watches you go down the hall, our eyes linger on his mug for a moment. It is an agency approved mug. Uh, and so from there, we transition over to the agency coffee shop, where everyone in the agency is approved to come and get coffee. No outside branding is allowed inside the agency to prevent corporate influence and conspiracy. So a coffee shop was needed. The line is always long. It's anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. But since there's no coffee stations on the designated work floors either, this is part of a company routine and an expected part of your job to go stand in the coffee line at least one part of the day. So behind the counter, placing agency-approved beans and an agency-approved coffee machine pond, who do we see standing there? You see uh, relatively tall, probably about 5'9", uh, pinkish person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah they're a barista they're wearing a cute little green uh nondescript apron and a nice little nice little nondescript agency hat um they are putting out all of these little cups uh and 
pouring from the carafe and as soon as they return the carafe back to the drip area for the coffee uh you see that they sort of like open the top and their little hand kind of goops into yeah. the filter uh-huh. uh scoops up some of the wet grounds from the filter mm-hmm. and then just shovels the grounds into their mouth yes. uh as their hand slimes back into the shape of a hand uh i'm generic nickname amazing uh, my friends call me jen or eric or nick Wonderful. or me uh but you can call me whatever you want fantastic and what are your character pieces my character pieces i am my anomaly is a drain uh my reality is creature and my competency if you haven't guessed, is barista. barista. Fantastic. So you are behind the counter uh, as you just finish shoveling this mound of coffee grounds into your mouth. And you turn around and you see about three people back in line. You see Willow, who <clears throat> is played by Faye. Uh, Willow gives you a little wave. Um, and what is it about Willow that is so special to you? Willow is just... <sighs> I think I feel like Willow is the first person who ever started calling generic by a recurring nickname. Yeah. Uh and you know uh Willow is just so pretty. And yeah. I both uh want to gently caress Willow's face and I also want to uh borrow it yeah absolutely but i can't decide which one of those things i want (laughs) and you are in the habit of uh borrowing things permanently from willow Mm -hmm. uh what was the last thing you stole from willow uh lock of hair so my hair color has now changed uh the the goo kind of tints everything a little bit yeah my hair is slightly darker to match willow's willow's hair it's a little bit it's a little bit cuter a little bit a little bit same length you know uh willow didn't notice because i took just a small lock of hair but absolutely there is a absolutely. small bald patch on the back of willow's head now where and you're no longer and you're noticed. not in the business of taking things from willow specifically that willow will miss at this point I haven't taken anything Willow would miss. I did, I think, steal a pair of ear- earrings at one point. Yeah. And uh, probably a couple rings that don't work because they just goop through my hands. Yes. Uh, I do. haven't I that. haven't taken anything like a nose or fingers yet. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yet. Great. There's there's a first time for everything. Um. So as Willow comes up to the counter, you're finally getting up the nerve actually to have maybe your first actual conversation with Willow. Uh, Up to this point, you haven't had a conversation uh, with her other than knowing what her order is. And you have something really important that you'd like to ask Willow. So I'm going to let you do that as Willow approaches the counter. Welcome to the agency coffee shop. Can I get coffee for you this morning? (laughs) Good morning, sunshine. How are you doing? (laughs) I'm... Doing great. Would you like a coffee? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Um, can you get me my usual? Yes, I sure can. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm going to turn around and I'm going to start like, I'm going to goop my hand through the filter cap of the coffee. And I'm just going to like, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to like, suck the grinds out so it travels up my arm and into my mouth and I'm frantically chewing as I'm pouring Mm -hmm. and making her coffee uh and then I'm gonna turn around and it's like it's the biggest mug I found the anomaly mug that's like slightly bigger than the rest of the cups uh I make sure it's a little bit extra hot and I set it on the counter and I'm like so before you actually, I'm going to actually have you roll a uh, professionalism uh, for oh, this God. because you are going to try and keep your poise under pressure, uh, resist being distracted. Um, and talking to Willow has really, could really mess you up. Uh, I do-, do you have any, any no. traits in professionalism? Okay. I so you, you will be rolling with burnout. Um, okay. 
Uh, Unless you can find a way to release your burnout. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Would you say that uh, I made Willow feel welcome with my professional uh, professional welcome there? With, uh, I don't know, Willow, do you shop? feel welcome? I think that I always know that my little Ray Sunshine takes care of me. So, um, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Then you can release your burnout. Uh, I'm releasing and I was... my burnout. Wonderful. So you are rolling uh, n- with no burnout. Ooh, baby. That's a trifecta. Ooh, so you with- rolled Ooh. with transcendence. Amazing. Okay. So if we Thank go you, over to my handy field module, we have what we call, so when you roll three, that is uh, what's called a stable success. No generated chaos from that. So I don't get to take any chaos from those last three uh, that are not uh, threes. Okay, so uh, yeah, you set this um, perfect mug uh, of exactly what Willow likes right down uh, in front of her. Here's your coffee for the day. Um, Do you have a moment? Of course, what's up? <clears throat> I was wondering. Oh, would you? I can scoot a little closer. <laughs> be interested in coffee tomorrow morning. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Is there is there anything anything more to that or just in general? <laughs> and I feel like it would be very apparent that generic would start slowly, like gently and slowly sinking behind the counter. Yeah. But it's not that they're like ducking, it's that their goo is losing form and they like at their uh, lower half. And so they're like behind yes. the counter. You can't see it, but they're melting a little bit. Truly uh, melting, yeah. Um, I... Willow's gonna uh, reach her hand sort of like across like the counter. Or actually, probably I would imagine like you've handed over the mug and yeah. sort of before before like fully letting go, she just kind of adjusts her hand to like touch the back of your hand um, and is going to say, uh, did you mean you would, I like to get coffee with you? Yeah. That sounds great. I would love to do that. Oh, great. Okay, I'll make sure that the coffee is brewed and that the grounds are fresh. Um, <laughs> have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. <laughs> and as if to save hat. you from absolutely like turning and truly into a puddle uh one of your co-workers pokes their head out of the back uh towards you uh hey uh eric can you uh can you come fix this stereo again it's stuck on this weird music and i can't get it to change on it oh you can have a great day little little Bumblebee, <laughs> and then people turn and just like immediately walk as quickly and try. The, they get a little taller as suddenly a work task happens, so they yes. can refocus. Amazing. So you go into the back and you see that the stereo that generally plays agency approved music seems to be on the fritz, and you hear some simple uh, elevator like music playing through it. It's not intrusive or bothersome, and you actually hadn't noticed it before. Oh, um, uh, well, um, and then I'm gonna sort of just like b- pick it up and drop it, smack it a little, try and smack it around. I, we can call tech support. Oh, I mean, if it's gonna be a call to tech support, then that's fine. It's like not bad. It's just like, I don't know, it's not what the agency usually approves, but hey, if it's coming through in the stereo, I guess then it's fine, right? It should be agency approved, correct? I think. I yeah. honestly don't know. I don't know how this works. Uh, yeah, I mean, me neither, but I'm just assuming that this is how it goes. It has to work like this, right? And like, and they start mimicking a uh, co-worker's voice. Wonderful. Amazing. Um, so 
you you put the stereo back down and you have this conversation with your coworker and it's at this moment you hear a call come in uh, over your um like barista's headset uh and it says generic nickname please report to the executive suite 1C for briefing you've never been to the executive wing before and you've never left the coffee shop before you sleep in the coffee grinds bin yeah mm, yeah that makes sense should i should i bring coffee uh, is it my mimic the there's no response headset it, the line oh. seems to be silent now okay uh i got it do you got this you got this uh y- yeah I, I mean i guess if you're if you gotta go you gotta go i just got paid i'm gonna bring and then i'm just gonna grab like a pour over carafe of like hot coffee holding yes. it from the bottom too like there's no I grounds to grounds receptors. yeah grounds to grounds <laughs> i uh gotta go Wonderful. So, good so you uh, you slink out of the coffee shop, uh, not even punching out before the end of your <laughs> yeah. shift and hoping uh, your coworkers and your manager doesn't miss you. So from there, as you start making your way uh, up towards uh, Executive Suite 1C, we travel much closer to the Executive Suites, actually about six floors below, where we stand outside an office in the Public Relations Department. So we move to an occupied office. It's actually the only office on this floor that's occupied at the moment. Recently, there have been a lot of layoffs in the PR department, and the work has been piling onto the desk of the last person here. Um, We look past a mountain mountain of briefings and devices and Faye who do we see sitting there oh wow uh so you see a very very put together buried behind all this mountains of work a very put together uh young woman I would say she's probably in her I don't know like I don't know like boss bitch age so like uh late 20s early 30s kind of like rocking that like mm, she's like coming into her stride type of a vibe uh she yes, has her hair it. pulled back she's got a headset on she has a couple of different phones uh sort of attached to her she's got like a pager on her hip um a couple of uh <laughs> different technological pieces scattered around um this is uh heather olivier thompson uh and she's here to get shit done um, amazing and what are your character pieces my character pieces. So my uh, anomaly is a uh, catalog. My reality is overbooked. And my, uh, uh, what is it? The competency. The, the competency thank you. Um, is public relations. <laughs> and Heather, to your knowledge, why have there been a lot of layoffs in the PR department? Well, uh, as far as I know, it seems like uh, there are a lot of people who sort of were found themselves in this position, even though they really weren't cut out for it. Uh, They're not very good at spinning things in a positive way. And so Heather just assumes that she was like, they just couldn't they just couldn't cut it. Uh, And the they needed someone who could. Amazing. Okay. So um, as you're looking at your calendar, trying to figure out how you're going to fix all of these, you know, handle all of these briefings, get all of these memos and notes done, um, you look a little bit more directly at your calendar and it looks weird at first glance, but you're not quite sure why. And then one of your other pagers uh, buzzes. It simply says, call Spence needs something. Uh, And this is referring to the son of your other boss. Uh, your other boss, Tiffany Reynolds, uh, and her son, Spencer Reynolds. Why is it that your other boss's son might need something, and why does that fall on you? Well, uh, (laughs) my other boss uh, has a tendency to uh, overlook her child's needs and thinks that because I am uh, uh, in her employ, that that also means that I'm her babysitter. So uh, I assume that this is something like uh, Spence has uh, forgotten to get a uh, some kind of uh, permission slip signed or, um, you know, didn't didn't make it to school or got in trouble at school or 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 something along those lines. Um, because, you know, he has some kind of a need that uh needs to be taken care of in some kind of official capacity so she uh will put down her uh like she'll like take the phone off the ringer in her office for like her work phone her 
triangle is to work phone. Yes. And then she will uh, pick up uh, the phone for, uh, she'll like, you know, clear the message on her pager and then call, uh, call Spence and see okay. what's going on. So you call Spencer, who is going to be played by Cody. Uh, now, Spencer, Spencer needs something big from his mom that he knows she won't give uh but he knows he might be able to get it from heather so i'll let you have that conversation uh with heather to try and get that something big that you need sure heather spence what do you need heather what's up my favorite oh no what do you want what do you do for mom again <laughs> too much too much bud <laughs> that's What's good up? that's no that's funny that's good <laughs> um no i just so ma so mom said it was okay mm -hmm. if you um got like a really nice like uh airbnb for like my friends and i to like spend a weekend and also if you would uh and we want to do like um like beach stuff like so it'd be cool if you got it like on the uh like on the sand uh, that'd be sick and also rent us uh jet skis and a boat she said it was cool she said it was cool mm -hmm. yeah. so i assume yeah. that this means that you are going on a little bit of a, a vacation with your friends and your mother that would be on her calendar right uh, yeah well it's like a long well, it's like a long weekend coming up and so like mm. i know she's like you don't gotta like check her she's like busy like i know she's gonna be like really busy uh with s stuff and so uh-huh let me see what i can do uh sure well you can well you can do anything right because you're the best mm -hmm. hold on for a minute, at what Spence. you do yep mm -hmm. and she just like uh meets him for a second and is gonna start looking up uh stuff with like airbnbs that are nearby uh to this I don't know actually if we're like a coastal <laughs> town in uh where where are we Tur Turnian City? Yeah, Turnian um, City. Yep. Um I don't I don't know if there's like, you know, within a a couple hours drive or is this like a flight situation? Like what's happening? Yeah, I mean the coast is around somewhere. Mm. You're pretty sure? Mm, somewhere. If only I could have a vacation. Uh <laughs> Yeah, you you don't take vacations, so you don't know where the coast is. I don't know where the coast is. I don't have time to go to the beach. Who has time? Um yeah, so I would look up Airbnbs. I would also look up. I would assume that I have a Spence Spencer fund from yeah. uh from Tiffany. Yes, and do. um and see sort of what that's at. Uh, it's loaded. Would, it's absolutely loaded. Right. Um. So I would. I would get all of that handled for him. Um. Uh, and 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 book the rooms and uh uh. I would, I think I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do, uh, like what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to hire someone who will like drive the boat for them. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so there's some kind of person who's controlling that. Right. Um, not leaving and... a bunch of teenagers with a boat and jet skis. Correct. Uh, no yeah. jet skis are happening. I will, however, get them like water skis and um a tube. Uh, Wonderful. so like they can go tubing. Um, so for uh, all of these phone calls, I'm actually going to have you roll me. Um, sure. Yeah, you know what you're going to do. I'm going to have you roll me initiative. Uh, because this is uh, how you, you're going to try and do this quickly. You're going to try to we'll roll your response time, your processing speed, and how Great. fast you can do your job. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> I got one three. So. Amazing! So that is a success, and I'm going to take the rest of that as chaos. Um, so you uh are able to book all of these things, no problem. And you do that like within about five minutes, while Spencer is just rattling on about all of the things that uh, he and his friends are going to do while they're away. Yeah, so that that whole time, uh, like she she would have been like, give me a second, and like put him on hold, and then came back before she was done, and been like, so tell me about the people that you're going with and whatever, like trying to figure out 
are these people that uh like like the little bit of like the the momming making sure that he's gonna be yes. okay of like are you going with the people that you feel safe with like what's happening what are their names what are their like can I get their parents numbers just to make sure that like you know in case any one of them has an emergency so I have that like you know whatever so um, you've got it on lock you've got it yeah. under control so you have this conversation and you extract as much information as Spencer's probably willing to give you um, in this phone call. Uh, and he promises to write down the rest afterwards. Um, and as you put down your phone, um, knowing that this will likely take an adjustment of your calendar, because now you've had to spend time with this call, you take a look at your calendar and you look at it. And uh, it seems like every moment of previously unbooked time that you have has been filled with something that says assistant training. Um, you have asked for an assistant many, many times, but you've never been given one and you didn't put these in your calendar. I don't have time for this. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like find someone nearby to be like, I need to speak with someone right now. <laughs> uh, so you would know that probably the best way to get in touch with the person who booked the appointment was to look who booked the appointment. Sure. Yeah. So calendar. immediately look at that. Okay. Of course. Uh, so as you open the uh, calendar notification for as one of them for assistant training, uh, there is no name uh, of who booked it. And the second you open it, it starts populating the rest of your calendar kind of in perpetuity for like the rest of the fiscal quarter. And you, it, it is like almost like you're just getting like hundreds and hundreds of ping notifications. It's ping, 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 ping. It's filling up your calendar kind of all the way through. And these notifications are now pinging essentially like, and you see them that they're going to ping every hour on the hour and you can't turn the notifications off. They've got to get these bugs fixed. Um, I am going to... Uh... I'm just going to start like, because like the computer's obviously broken or something's yes. going on with it. So I'm going to leave this area and um, like immediately start poking into whoever I can, whether it's like IT or, okay. or whoever is nearby um, to be like, uh, I have a problem and I need to get it fixed now because I've got stuff to do. Okay, so as you open the door to your office, uh, posted on a post-it note on the outside of your door, it says, report to Supervisor Trina's office, Executive Suite 1C. Well, Supervisor Trina, we are going to have a talk, and she puts that in her pocket, and she goes, she's like, I'm ready, and she just marches straight to that, straight to that suite. Amazing. So as you head on up, uh, we leave the PR department for a moment, and we start to hear a soft ringing sound slow and steady the ring of an old rotary phone begins to trill at a rhythmic pace our view starts to snake through the hallways and one floor to the left uh, around a brightly lit corridor we focus on the ringing accompanied by the sound of dress shoes walking at a brisk pace down the hallway likely going to the source of our sound uh, and there we see cody can you describe your character and tell who we see walking down this hallway uh yes walking down this hallway at a uh very brisk uh pace uh, as you said the 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 click clacking of dress shoes you see in a uh well-fitted uh double-breasted plaid uh suit very clean haircut uh side uh side parted combed back um purplish in in hue big square uh, uh, thick framed glasses, you see uh, Indigo Briar. Amazing. Um, and Indigo, you're walking towards the sound of this ringing. Uh, but where were you before? Um, before this, uh, Indigo was uh, definitely picking up uh, uh, coffee, um, okay. something they do every morning. Uh, Amazing. Because it's probably going to be a long day. Probably going to be. A long day. So you've come from the agency coffee shop, uh, coffee in hand. Uh, and can you state your arc pieces for everyone at home? Absolutely, I can. Um, my anomaly is whisper. Um, the uh, reality is romantic, and my it's competency. Yep. is a hotline. Amazing. 
So you're on your way to do your job, your one job at this agency, which is to answer that ringing telephone. You know your office is at the end of this hallway and you're walking at a quick pace to ensure that you get the call before it potentially disconnects. However, uh, as you walk by the office, uh, one of your colleagues um, always seems to have an open door. Um, Jonathan (laughs) is there uh, doing something and as you briskly walk past, your eyes linger, but you have to press on. You wish to linger longer, but you can't uh, because the line is ringing. And as you approach your office, you see that the door is already ajar, uh, which is odd, but not totally unfounded. Uh, It might have been the janitor. And at your desk sits your phone, a black shining metal polished rotary with each number gleaming in white under a bright single overhead light that hangs above an uncomfortable chair sits behind your desk and your phone keeps ringing. Um, Indigo would enter their office shut the door, making sure not to slam it, um, sitting down uh, at the desk, and then answer the phone. Okay, so you pick up the phone, and it's Jarlene, uh, who is played by Anne. Uh, now, Anne, you don't have to tell us what Jarlene looks like, uh, but can you tell us about the qualities of Jarlene's voice? I think you're muted, my dear. My apologies. I said her name's Darlene, so I think I'll give you about three guesses what her voice is like. Amazing. Wonderful. Um, And you are a frequent caller on uh, this phone <laughs> you line. You know it. Um, what do you usually, like, all the, a lot of the time you call for a, bun- a myriad of reasons, but what does the conversation mm-hmm. usually come to? It, there's always one point that you always end up arriving to at your calls. What is that? I'm trying so hard to figure out if Indigo is single. Uh, And they are just a sneaky little snake. They will never tell me. Amazing. So uh, Jarlene is on the phone. And Indigo, you know that company company policy dictates that you have no more than two minutes per caller. Uh, You have no idea why it's this policy, but that is the case. So I will let you two have this phone call. Hi, Indigo. How you doing? Oh, uh, hi, Jarlene. Uh, uh, Thank you for calling the uh, agency today. How can uh, how can we help you? How can I help you? Look at you all fancy, cute as a bug's ear. How's your day at work going, honey? Uh, my day is uh, my day is good. I, I have I have had my coffee. I've sat down. That's well, that, how how do you take your coffee? Um, yeah. Uh. Sorry, what are you calling about? Oh, I don't know. I think there's a ghost in my house. But uh, back to the coffee. Um, you know. Okay, sure. I there's actually, a ghost there's... in your house. So in this, uh, um, yeah, we have some. Did you need me to send someone over to to fix that? Uh, the agency. Could I'm I sure send has... you over? Um, <laughs> uh, no. I oh. I I have to answer the the phones. Oh, Both all phones. right. I, I work alone, um, but, but I'm sure the agency can have someone uh, uh, right over to you. We'll, we'll send someone out with a with a briefcase, and and they can. Must be you. lonely all day. They're just sitting in your little office, looking pretty as a speckled pub. Just, uh, I know well, it I, makes me well, sad to think about. Well, I don't know how I look. There there aren't any mirrors in here. Um, but, oh, I know that uh, you're pretty as a spotted horse in a daisy pasture. Oh, that means something um i i can tell i've got i've got a bit of a sense for these things you know i can read auras really yes that's no well, that's interesting you 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 should probably send in an application then wait you think we could be colleagues uh, is there an opening in your department you see that the time in the timer that starts the second you pick up the phone is ticking ever closer um, uh, opening in my department? No, uh, un- unfortunate. Uh, um. What about what's the office next to yours? Asking for me. Uh, an office, an office next to to, yeah, to yeah. mine. Oh, that would be uh 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 another another coworkers, different department though. I'm not actually sure. Oh, what department's that? They hiring? 
Um, I am very flexible in many ways. I can adapt to new environments. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's that's great. The agency loves flexibility, especially in uh, uh, time and and personality. I think that will be that'll be great. We are almost um, almost out of time, though. Uh, however, so your main uh, your your reason for no calling... worries. I'll call back. Don't worry about it. Okay, I got oh, you on speed dial. Abs I'll okay. And would you are you are you satisfied with uh, uh, today's conversation? Have you say you've been uh, you've been helped? I mean, I do still have a ghost in my house. And also, you have not told me how you take your coffee. Uh, five out of seven. Five out of seven. That is hopefully com company uh, acceptable. Thank you so much for your call, Darlene. Uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. Talk to you in 10 minutes. Bye. Talk, if, oh, okay. As you hang up the phone, the second you put the call back down on the receiver, the phone um, immediately starts to ring again, which is odd. Oh, but uh, it immediately they, starts to ring again. The, at, after the, the first ring picks it back up. Uh, thank you for calling the agency. Uh, uh, how can we help you today? As you're just finishing your standard agency approved greeting, you start hearing uh, music on the other side, a simple tonal music that seems to be continuous. And the music music just keeps playing. Oh. Um thank you for calling the agency. How 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 can we help you today? No change. It just keeps playing. Uh they would look at the phone for a second, confused, and then put it back down. The That's second the phone cool. hits the couple over again, it starts to ring again. Pick it back. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for calling the agency. Uh, Doesn't we... even let you finish before the music starts again. Um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, they would, um, I think, being quite unsettled by this uh would uh open you you would see their jaw sort of unhinge a little bit mm -hmm. and open and then that sound would play the music that is playing through the phone would then come through their mouth um but in a way to cancel each other out uh Ooh. as indigo is going to use silence Oh, amazing. So can you describe, you're using, this is the first time we're seeing someone use an ability. Can you describe this ability for, for everyone? Uh, uh, yes, this, um, if, uh, sorry, let me pull up. I have it here somewhere. Um, this uh, ability is, uh, it, it comes with my anomaly. The, there it is, whisper. Um, you open your mouth and admit a sound that adjusts and emit a sound that adjusts frequency to cancel out the sounds you make. Uh, roll in subtlety. So being so unsettled by this music that won't stop, yeah. um, they are just reverting back to what they know how to do. And, and, and it's basically like, if something is bad, make it stop right now. Amazing. So you, uh, I'm going to have you roll subtlety, please. Do yes. you have any uh, quality assurances in this, in this uh, ability? Uh, yes, that is the highlighted triangles. That is correct. I have three. Fantastic. Um, so I roll 64, yes? 64. Wonderful. I, come on, nope. No, no threes? Uh, n no threes. I would like to use one quality assurance, please. Absolutely. So you roll one and I'm going to take the other five as chaos. You guys are just Wonderful. giving me so much delicious chaos. Thank you so much. Let me find my chaos track. Okay, so you, um, wonderful. So you emit this sound out of your mouth um, and the noise stops as it's intended to, as your ability allows it to. Um, however, you start hearing the sound of running and you hear gasping breaths as someone is... <sighs> And you hear the pad of feet running down on the other end of this phone line. It is like somebody's holding a phone and absolutely running. You you can almost hear the fear in their voice as they continue to <sighs> running down. Uh, as you care, this is what the sound that is coming down the phone. 
uh indigo would call out to them hello yes you you called the second your voice comes out in a normal mouth you hear screaming echo down the line it is rocketing in your ear it is a loud piercing fearful scream coming down the line uh, if if you would give me uh, your location, uh, the engines, the agency can send someone. Um, the phone to line you goes dead, help. and you just hear a dial tone. I hope I don't get a demerit for that. And they're going to hang up the phone. And what are your demerits? Delivering bad news, which I believe I did to Jarlene. <laughs> As you put Thank down the you. phone, realizing you gave Jarlene bad news, you feel a sudden depression, a sudden weight, as you do receive one demerit. Oh. So as you put down the phone after the line goes dead, it rings once more. I think they would brush their uh, brush their hair back. Um and let the phone ring this time twice before picking up. It rings. The trill coming through as clear as ever. Thank you for calling the agency. How can we help you today? Oh, hi, Indigo. It's uh, Danica. Uh, and you know this to be Danica O'Neill, uh, your customer, the customer service manager uh, of the agency and your direct boss. Um I have just gotten a request in for you to report to Supervisor Trina's office. She'd like to see you pretty quick, it sounds like. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'll just send someone else down to cover the line. Oh, uh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, uh, no problem at all. I'll great. be right there. Okay, that sounds great. great. Okay, thank you. Thank You've you. also never met Danica in person. You have only heard her voice, mm. as with most of your colleagues who work the hotline. That makes sense indigo i feel like doesn't really travel around the office much and you've heard of supervisor trina and you can assume she's a higher up executive but you haven't heard of her otherwise so as you're leaving your office you get about three quarters of the way down the hallway again and you hear the phone start to ring but you keep on walking mm -hmm. so as you all make your way one way or another to Supervisor Trina's office, you are aware that meeting other agents or meeting in an executive's office is likely an inv and presumably an invitation to field work, especially because fraternization between agency employees tends to be frowned upon. Um, the first, this is likely, for some of you, this might be the first time you've been called together, or if it isn't the first, it's been a long time since. Uh, so, so you didn't really exist outside of the mainframe until a little while ago when Avery may or may not have helped that happen, and nobody has really questioned your existence here or given you any tasks at this point. Um, so you've been primarily just watching Princess Honeycake and uh, eating boba. Um, so you just feel happy to be included. Um, done. Sentience is wonderful. <laughs> Uh, done as you we have heard your entire job hinges on switching these switches on and off at specific times and you're pretty sure that's still the case regardless pretty nervous about what's going on down there to be honest <laughs> with you uh you're pretty sure that you still have to switch uh flip the switches regardless of the fact that you're being called in for field work Just um back down there and as they mentioned there's catastrophic consequences if this doesn't happen oh boy uh, nickname, you have only recently managed to keep your form together long enough to approximate the shape of a human. So this is really a step up in the world. Uh, we've gone from waste management branch to coffee shop to now being called into an executive's office, maybe for field work. This is a nickname. Big, so excited. This is a big, this is a big jump for you. Um, Indigo, this is kind of the first time that your work has required you to interact with people face to face. Other than Jonathan, uh, you don't see anybody else on the walk to your office. And you know that working with people face to face was not what you were hired for, as far as you know. No, Indigo assumed that this office was maybe even a ghost town. Didn't see many people. And Heather, perhaps you most of all, you haven't been privy to anything about the executive branch for the last few weeks. 
you actually used to handle PR for most of the C-suite executives, but you were suddenly demoted after one of their meetings went a bit off the rails. Uh, It was a company luncheon that got out of hand uh, and it left the agency with a lot of loose ends that you were supposed to clean up. And you'd been called to your other job. You'd missed the page to clean up the loose ends. And now you are basically what's left of the PR department. Maybe because they know you have the most to lose. So (laughs) the mood at the agency as well as you're arriving has also been kind of tense. There have been vague illusions about multiple anomalies escaping from the vault about six months ago. It was a huge problem. Everybody was up in arms about it, but nobody quite knew why. It felt you could feel this strange mood kind of ripple throughout the agency. It's kind of dissipated and faded now, uh, but the, the tension is still kind of there. So as you arrive in Trina's office, you see this beautiful mahogany desk uh, with a huge window wall behind overlooking the Turnian city skyline. And there are five chairs evenly spaced out in front of the desk. These are super cheap folding chairs, uh, which are stark comparison to the grandeur of this desk uh, that Trina seems to have. Um, Who arrives first? Who do we think arrives first? I feel Probably. like I can teleport. That's true. Yeah, that is a good I point. Like I was like, easy. I'm power walking there. So like, I'm, Heather's early, but I not faster than a computer. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you arrive first. Um, There are chairs arranged kind of in a like vague-ish semi-circle um, to the left and the right-hand side. Which chair do you take? Is it, it, wait, is anyone in the room or is it empty? Nope, it's empty. Um, I don't take a chair. I stand okay. very alert. Amazing. So you are standing. Uh, where do you stand in the room? Dead center. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> right in the center of the room. I love this. Um, <laughs> who arrives next? Or I, I would feel. Uh, you. Oh, okay. I was yeah, like, I don't, you, <laughs> no, I was like, oh, I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, no, I, I think you. that. I think that very much so Heather is like very confidently strides into this room. Okay. So you in- see uh, Soso standing in the middle of the room, uh, flickering in and out just a little bit. You've never met uh, her before. Uh, and there are five empty chairs and Supervisor Trina is not here. Hello, my name is Soso. What is your name? Hi, Soso. I'm Heather. Uh, was there anyone? Hi, here Heather. Hi. Was there anyone in here when uh, you got in the room or has it always been empty? It's not empty because we're here now. Great. Okay. Um, Are you going to sit down? Would you like to sit down? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. She's like, okay, sit down. (laughs) Where do you sit, Heather? Smack dab in the middle, babe. (laughs) Amazing. So so, Soso is standing almost directly in front of you and you take the third chair in the center. Wonderful. I love this. Um, No, no, Soso doesn't move and is just staring at Heather. (laughs) Yes. Fantastic. Are you comfortable here? I would be a little bit more comfortable if you just scooted back like a lip, just like a hair, just like a smidge or sat down. You can sit next to me. Oh, um, I'm going to scoot back. But do I hit the desk if I scoot back? Uh, if you are facing, if you scoot backward, you'll either back into Heather or you will back into the desk. Yes. Okay. I scoot back. I back into the desk and I go, I will sit down. I'm going to walk around the desk and sit on the chair on the other side. Okay. That's a choice. Yeah. Great. Love that. That, Amazing. I don't, probably not the best place to sit. I don't know if you've ever, uh, been in this kind of situation before this, you should sit on this side. This is the side that you should be on. Princess Honeycake says it's great to make new friends over a dinner table. We don't have a table, dinner table today, but we do have a table. I start looking at the door <laughs> to see if anyone's going to come in. I'm like as of tapping this point, my foot. <laughs> as of this point, it's probably Nickname who arrives next, the distance wise. <laughs> Nickname just carrying a carafe of coffee in their hands uh, walks into the room. 
and looks looks at so so uh and goes trina would you like some coffee like just immediately assumes uh that so so is trina would we all like know <laughs> would we all know nickname or i mean because, if like, you visited the, the agency shop? coffee shop then yes you definitely would like have been to the coffee shop definitely go there every single morning <laughs> I, does so so get coffee no so so doesn't drink coffee so so only drinks frothed milk um but <laughs> mm. um she hasn't quite figured out how to navigate like the coffee shop yet so she's yeah. gone in a few times but then just gets overwhelmed and leaves <laughs> beautiful honestly <laughs> uh but yeah so sometimes I, she'll just take milk from like you know the free stuff table they have at the coffee shop where they have like the milk and sugar so she has just filled a cup with milk and taken that <laughs> trina i should have brought milk um oh heather uh coffee uh i'm i'm good thanks she's like holds up like a she still has coffee uh ready rocked and ready to go not Trina. I point it. I point it so so. I'm so so. Hello. It's nice to meet you. What's your name? This is going to be a train wreck. Ah, uh, <laughs> m- names are not important. Uh, nice to meet you. You're the second not person Trina? today I've met. Not met name. Met not important. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. I did not know how popular this name was. This is nickname. A- where do you sit? Ah, oh, God. Nickname would sit as, so that they can see the door as much as possible. So probably like the far left, like away from the door. So that way, whenever somebody comes in, they can stand up and be like, coffee? Because uh, that's all they got. Amazing. Um, And then who arrives next? Is it Indigo or Dunn? Dunn is for sure last. <laughs> I was going to say Indigo is probably in the... Uh like when they heard the phone ringing is nervously power walking also to <laughs> Trina's office and would uh, uh would enter for sure in a huff uh and indigo as you walk in um we love that there's an honor system going on here already yeah, um i got a, I, I got a demerit just you feel I. the depressing rate of realizing I, that actually you called... i got a demerit too yeah what did you get a demerit for because I'm not supposed to refuse any requests. And I think oh, Heather you kind of requested I down. sit down. Oh. Did. You, well, yeah, I did both. sit down, but I, she said, come to this side. And you said, and, and you didn't I, do it. I, 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 I didn't do it. I was so, really invested so, in my demerits demerits honey cake narrative. Demerits for both of you, please. Demerits for both of you. <laughs> you know what? To be fair, Princess Honeycake does win in most scenarios. So I don't blame you. <laughs> um, yeah. So Indigo, as you walk in, where do you sit? Uh, Indigo would, uh, look at whichever chair is closest to the center and then would, I assume, see, uh, Heather in that seat. Yes. And be like, hmm. Okay. Uh, And go to like the, uh, like next to Heather. Okay. So we've got, uh, Nickname sitting next to the door. Uh, we have Soso sitting at Trina's desk. Uh, we have uh, uh, Heather in the middle and Indigo, I guess I'm assuming between uh, Nickname and Heather. Wonderful. Uh, and done. You arrive last. Oh, geez. Oh, boy. Hey, everyone. Coffee? Mm-hmm. Hey. Uh, 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 yes, I would love some coffee. Oh, yeah, great. It this hands the whole carafe. It's gingerly sort of take it. I'm just holding the whole carafe. <laughs> so as you're all kind of looking at each other, uh, so so you're probably the one to see this first. Um, Trina just kind of strides over, not through the door, but just kind of to her desk. She's just there. Um, that's that's how people locomote normally. <laughs> so I say, as she... hello, my name's So So. What's your name? Ah, uh, hi. I'm uh, I'm Trina. I'm glad you're here. Trina, thank you. Would you like to take a seat? Ah, uh, you know, why don't I stand? You sit. I'll stand. 
I would lean over to Soso and whisper, I like trains too. <laughs> hmm. Okay. <laughs> Locomoting is super cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wasn't able to locomote very much before when I lived inside the mainframe. But now that I have limbs, I can move freely around the building. Yeah, cool. And Trina cool. just kind of looks at this lovely little interaction going on amongst the fields. And she goes, well, this is this is really nice to get everyone here together. Um, I'm going to just... I'm going to just get started. I have a couple other meetings today, so I, th I thought I'd call all you here. Um, Trina looks so effortlessly put together in the most laid back way. She's wearing like a really, like these really beautiful, like navy dress pants with a b fantastic um, pleat down uh, down the front and it's like a, a linen dress shirt that's like got a couple buttons open. She has a, a really cute blonde bob that, and she's wearing... You know she's wearing a little bit of makeup, but it does not look like she's wearing anything. It's looked like she got out of bed, just kind of tussled and was like, this is great. And she rolled into work. Um, she looks effortless. Um, a and true goes, boss, babe. A true <laughs> boss, babe. Uh, if Indigo anyone's going to- absolutely taken away by <laughs> Um, And actually, you know what, Indigo? You know what? As you say that. Let me see here. <laughs> oh no, they're hot. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. They're hot. Hot. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is one of those moments where um I can start uh where is it? Here it is. Um so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna do this early. I have a bunch of chaos to spend. Uh, I cannot ignore when the opportunity strikes. I'm gonna spend three chaos here to see if you notice that you've got a vibe. You've got a vibe about Trina. Um, yeah, you've got a vibe about her. <laughs> yeah, definitely. As 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 Trina walked in, Indigo was like, "Is like catching catching Trina's eyes, like, oh, like there's a there's a reason I was called here, probably. Uh, uh um, <clears throat> uh." Hey, Trina. Hi. You, uh, you rang? <laughs> oh, because you work at yeah. the hotline, yeah, right? The yeah. Yeah. The yeah. You, ca you called? I, uh, well, I didn't call you directly. You're, you're. Oh, but you, but you asked for, but you asked for me. Uh, I, I guess so. So, cause you're here, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're here now. We could also be. You know, any and anywhere or we could be um, at dinner. You know, both of us. I may not even get a break for dinner today with all the meetings I have. So you know, yeah, I'm gonna no, just fully under, yeah, completely. I'm gonna get this meeting started. Yeah, I hate absolutely. to interrupt, um, but uh, I like you said, Trina. You're on a schedule. I'm on a tight schedule. I'm sure we're all very busy. Can we? Oh, I bet can you we get are, Heather. Please? Yes, uh, I guess <laughs> I am. So, uh, mm -hmm. could we actually? Could we start? That'd be great. Does anyone want coffee? <laughs> Dan, you had something to say. To uh, Dan would definitely lean over to Indigo and be like, uh, "If you want to grab, I could definitely get some food. I would love if if you want to get some food. I'm yeah. starving." Yeah, what are you doing? Toso's gonna this? lean over the desk as well, like the whole way across the desk, to be like, "I have recently discovered eating, and I find it quite pleasant." Okay. As Trina yeah. notices you all doing this, she goes, "You know." You, I've got a little something for you maybe to do before dinner, but what you do is on your own time. Um, so I, uh, I apologize for the breach in protocol and calling you here, but we have a kind of a surprising situation that's developed and I thought I needed a unique set of eyes on it. We and the executive are having a little bit of, a little bit of a conundrum, just trying to figure out what to do. So I figured we would just kind of you know, bring a couple new people in here. And this goes without saying that this is completely classified information that is very much above your pay grade at this point, but you know, you're here. So why not? So about six months ago, as most of you know, we had some anomalies escape from the vault. Um, over the last little while, we have had a grand total of 57 
anomalies escape. Um, and while have we we have retrieved all of them, but one. Uh, one of them was removed, however, uh, but the agent who removed the anomaly uh, as well, Mr. Dunst, uh, has gone AWOL. So, you know, we're just counting that one as a as a as a potential loss. We'll think we'll figure it out. So this has put uh, a lot of stress on our amazing chief strategic officer, uh, Garrett Parker Roy. I'm sure you've seen Mr. Parker Roy. His face is on a lot of the billboards and the signs around the agency. And Two sugars, know, no cream. Uh, Gar- Garrett? Mm. G- Garrett's coffee is two mm-hmm. sugars, no cream? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's information I, I don't need. But great, thank you. Um, yeah, I have so- access to Garrett's browser history. <laughs> oh, I, I definitely don't need that or want it either. Um, got you. I can't believe Mr. Dunst is gone. Uh, yes, um, Mr. Dunce stole a normal briefcase and did not report it to the vault, um, and he has gone missing. He's also oh. taken an agency truck, but that's less of a loss. That's heavy. Mm, that's really heavy. Sorry. Why Sorry, would he I do that? Saw... Well, Mr. Dunce, uh, has served at the agency for a long time, and our sense is that he was just bored. So, you know, we're hoping that he gets bored again and returns with the anomaly that he took. In any case, um, Mr. Parker Roy has been under an immense amount of stress and he's really had to focus on, how do I say this, maintaining the professionalism of the agency in spite of all of this duress. And gosh, he has had to handle most of these difficulties pretty head on, which has undoubtedly had some negative effects on his well-being um we offered him the agency assistance program but as he was expected to do he turned it down and just kept working hard because you know we just keep working hard at the agency and that's how everything gets done um however it seems that mr parker roy is now missing um he was seen leaving a late night strategy session last night and uh well it's just left us with a lot of questions um, there were a couple C-suite executives there and their various assistment, and well, reports are a bit scattered as to what happens, but it seems that Mr. Parker Roy had some, you can see that she's choosing her words very carefully, um, and it is very clear that she is underselling the situation that happened. Um, he's had some difficulty managing himself and that he left abruptly, um, before he left, we're also worried, potentially, that the skills that have made him good at his job have altered in some way. Um, and there have been perhaps new things that have been awakened in him that we would love to ensure that he can utilize in reference to his job. Um, so we're just going to ask you to try and track him down. We're going to try and see if you can find Mr. Parker Roy. Sure. And that will like mm-hmm. alleviate uh, a lot of stress off of like your plate. Um, I mean, I wasn't there. I only just returned from vacation yesterday. And as I said, the All reports right. are just sparse. So I really don't know. It's kind of just been put on my plate. But, uh, you know, sure. I figured to put, put a team together, I guess. Wonderful. But if we take that, like, would that like open up like your schedule? Um. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It would depend on how much, you know, consultation you need or mm-hmm. executive guidance. I don't know. Well, we have well, kind of expected timeline with all of this. I mean, Mr. Parker Roy's schedule is pretty full. So we're, we're hoping that he can be present for his meetings soon. Um, does this come with a raise? Uh, you know, it does say in the contracts that you sign when you start at the agency that you can be called to field work at any time, which does fall under your job description. Oh, yeah. Um, could it come with a raise? You know, I don't work in the financial department. You're going to have to take it up there. Okay. And who should I speak to? Maybe up there? You know, I truly don't know anybody in the financial department. Okay. Could, like, I drop your name, though, and, like, probably get a meeting? I mean, I don't know. You're going to have to try. I, I, As I said, I have never spoken to anyone in financials. Why would cool. I? So you're, you're cool if I try. That's great. That's awesome. That's great. Black coffee. Uh, 
No, thanks. I'm more of a latte person myself. <sighs> latte? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. Um, yeah. So, so do we yeah, get like a, any um, kind of resources for this, uh, for this endeavor? Yeah. Um, yeah, like a um, lunch you... budget or like a per diem? I mean, Can you let us know where like... the late night strategy session happened yes. last oh, night, gosh. please? Yeah, any information would be great. Thank you. And like you. your phone yes. number if we got like have a question or something. Uh, you know, you can Your phone just... number would actually be great. Very helpful. Um, yeah, yeah, it would be really helpful to you schedule can... our date later. You know, you can always send me an email. Um, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, but we're just kind of hoping that you can uh, just try and try and track him down. And then you can really just report to any one of the receptionists that you found him. And we'll just figure that out from there. Um, as I said, Shouldn't we just we... report to you directly, though. Like, uh, I, I mean, if I am not in a meeting at the time, absolutely. You can come by. That sounds fine. Yeah. So, like we buy anything right. on, like oh, while we're out. Like, should we just like submit our receipts or? As I said, that's a financial department question. It's okay. not really my purview. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah um, no, cool. Ever to your question as to where this happened, um, the C-suite conference room is on the top floor. Um, that's where the meeting happened. Uh, and unfortunately, any the employees that were present, um, they've taken some leave to ensure that they feel kind of comfortable returning to work after Mr. Parker Roy's outburst. So I don't know 100% how this system works, but like, is there a way to know, like, obviously she's withholding information, um, but like, is there a way to like, know, like how bad it was or anything like that? Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So you're asking essentially to make an insight check is what I'm <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, asking. I don't have the words for this I system do. and I don't yeah. want it to. Okay, well, uh, let's look at our little handy dandy structures here is there a skill that you think that um you know what so i'm gonna have you roll attentiveness attentiveness I... is your skill at noticing detail recalling yes, information great. or sensing when something is wrong cool yes that sounds perfect that's another one three so amazing hot tonight i'm gonna take that chaos right from you there but that is a success mm. um so you do have a sense that something uh is pretty wrong that it would be have to be bad uh for them to have put all of the employees who were present on leave um so and trina doesn't seem like she was there she just got back from vacation um but uh but yeah she she seems like sh there is more that she's not saying but is kind of trying to you know she's got other things to do she wants this off her plate and she's uh she's hoping that you folks can do that for her is the is sense that you get um i i just want to be like listen trina we're all busy people I just want you to give it to me straight, okay? This is going to be the most helpful if you can give me all of the details uh, that you know so we can figure this out as quickly as possible, which is obviously in everyone's best interest. So please, can you share actual pertinent information that you have about the situation? Yeah, yeah Heather, I'll do my best. I get that your schedule is busy and mine is too. We'll, we'll do our best to, to make all that happen. Well, and obviously you. this is very important. You know, this is uh, not a small, not a small deal uh, with Mr. Parker Roy. You know, we all want to get this resolved as quickly as possible. So yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, the five of you were chosen because you're either replaceable, reliable, or in potentially some way responsible. Um, it's unclear as to which, but the executives feel like you're the best choice. Great. I have a question. Quick question. Yeah. Is Trina mundane? Is she mundane? Um, I mean, sh would she... she be a mundane target? No, she is not. No. A mundane okay. target would be someone who works outside the industry, um, someone who doesn't have any sort of powers, uh, or uh, you folks are what are called residents. You have anomalous powers, uh, but you are not anomalies yourself. Um, Trina sense. would also technically be a resident. Potentially. Dang. Maybe. Okay. All right. Uh, so I couldn't Trina, borrow Trina, Just one more question. Yes, um, Mr. Kruger. If I, I need to get my parking validated and... Um, I just lost my ticket. Like, so could I, should I just like, 
it's like it's just like five bucks like i had to pay so like normally i wouldn't have to pay because i can get it validated but i lost my ticket on the way up so like I was you already... know i don't have my uh, purse <laughs> on me done bucks. i'm sure that um records and accounting can resubmit you for that again financials department not and they're turn. and sorry and they're close uh there's it's pretty close to where we're going supposed to go to investigate or uh the financial department yeah you know i don't actually know isn't that funny? I don't know where That's the financial crazy. department is. <laughs> That's so crazy. Oh, crazy. Actually, Donna, oh, I, I work in the in, um, um, customer um, service and in, in complaints. I could I could get that uh, sorted uh, for you. Oh, so I you could don't... just re like submit my receipts to you. You know, so... before mm -hmm. we go submitting receipts to people, uh, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna honor Heather's Heather's question, and then we'll just let you guys get sorry, on your yeah, way. No, sorry, sorry. No, Don, that's totally okay. Um. So so yes. I also have a question. New friend Trina. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I leave the property? Ah. Uh, I don't know, can you? I've never tried. I work for the Triangle Agency. I am a proud employee here, and so I stay on the premises at all times. For anyone in the chat who heard uh, the Somewhere Ohio, I am getting such strong Geneva Beecham vibes and it makes me so happy. Um, you know, if you're, if you want to try and, I mean, yeah, you can go. I don't know. That's, you can leave if you need to. Oh, Princess Honeycake always says, good friends encourage each other to start out on new adventures. I appreciate you, Trina. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Speaking of leaving the property, Trina, like <laughs> Indigo, Indigo, <laughs> please. Hobbies. Indigo, please. You know, can we just focus for two seconds, please? Mm -hmm. That's so, all I ask. Um I, yeah, I really I'm need focused. You, so. As I'm focused. I said, the C suite was the last place that Mr. Parker Roy was seen. Um we're worried that he may be accompanied by some other anomalies. Um, as he, you know, seemed to have some something awaken within him while this was happening um and you know we we'd like those anomalies retrieved so we can study them um which is preferable and uh, our scientists um also figured that Ga mr parker roy was potentially the one who prompted these anomalies to um occur so you know we we want to make sure um we we also don't know that like what form the anomalies will take we just know that there might be some around. That's our, our best guess at this point. Um, and it's really unclear what's been awakened in Mr. Parker Roy. So we we definitely need him retrieved, safe and sound, um, to rehabilitate and let him relax. Yeah, really just like make sure that he gets a chance to relax after his um really sudden outburst. Yeah. So yeah. Um any any questions? Anything else that I can do for you before I let you get on your way? Nope. Okay. Um. It's so like well, the Saturday work for you. And oh you, my goodness. Okay, will, we're you, gonna go. Thank you, Trina. Don't stack Come these on. Chairs All right, on everyone. Uh, <laughs> done. Okay. The, okay. The last thing. The last thing is. Um. There's a. She gestures to the right. Uh. And there's a table on the right hand side of the room that you didn't see there before. It's just there now. Um. And you see. Uh. Five normal briefcases. Simple square. Uh. Leather briefcases. Um. And five. Uh. Ripple guns on the table. You know that a ripple gun. You've never touched a ripple gun before but you know that they can be used to neutralize uh anomalies um essentially to kill an anomaly um they are one-time use they are a sight scope if you can see it uh you can fire on it um uh and she says so they're there uh, but again we would really like them returned in a normal briefcase um the C-suite conference room is upstairs. Uh, oh, you're probably going to need this. Uh, she takes an access pass uh, off of her belt and she places it on the desk. Um, don't make me regret giving you that. Okay. Never thank would. Thank you. Yeah. Gonna... Great. Heather's going to grab it from Soso and go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to just also ask you to sign uh, another NDA. Um, on the way out, uh, just sign on the dotted line there. Uh, there should be some copies for you each on the desk and you can leave them here. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let you get on your way. 
Sure. Great. Just yeah. go ahead and pull these chairs up. It's all good. That's great. Thanks, Don. So as you all, uh, is there any questions that you have before we get you uh, on your way on this mission? Is so one bad. of the briefcases cuter? Uh, they all look almost identical. They are a simple brown leather. If it's you hold it, it will be cuter. You you know that deeply. I instantly like pick up a briefcase and bedazzle it with my yeah. little holographic <laughs> bullshit. I love that. There's some like eyes on it and it just becomes yeah. yours immediately. Um, so as you're leaving the room, uh, Trina stops you briefly, Heather. You know, Heather... I know this is the first time we met and I, I feel like we've really gotten off on the wrong foot. Um, but I, I just really want to make sure that you realize how important this field work assignment is for you. I think I can under, I think we understand each other. Uh, so. yeah. yeah. I mean, it took eight agents to tie up the loose ends that you left last time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is an important job for you. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What, what a project you've given me. Thanks. Uh <laughs> my pleasure, truly. Uh and as you leave the office, your access pass, your normal briefcases, and your ripple guns in hand, that is we were going to take our break a little later than I anticipated. Uh, we are gonna take a very quick break here. Um the Kickstarter video uh, from Triangle Agency is in the chat. Uh, if you have any sensitivities to flashing uh, and loud sounds eventually come, uh, potentially coming through, I would, I'm just going to give you a content warning for that now. There are some mild horror uh, triggers in the uh, video there, and there will also be a, uh, a wait video afterwards. The break lasts about 10 minutes, uh, so we will see you on the flip side. Uh, and don't forget to punch out. We'll see you soon. We'll see you Bye. back at the break. Bye. Bye. Greetings, Agent, and welcome to the Agency. This video will introduce you to our brand new workplace efficiency initiative, Triangle Agency, the tabletop role-playing game. Triangle Agency is a game of paranormal investigation in modern life, where you'll be capturing anomalies, pursuing your dreams, and becoming a monster! <laughs> That's weird. Okay, come on. You'll be capturing anomalies, pursuing your dreams, and becoming the best employee you can be. Reality is under siege. Invasive supernatural forces called anomalies latch on to human thoughts and feelings and break into our world, leaving only chaos in their wake. Agents like you are hired for your ability to use their power against them, allowing the agency to study how we might stop their invasion forever. We also develop competitively priced construction materials, home goods, and family entertainment. Our game has three important parts. First, the rule book. This guide has everything you need to know about playing the game, how to make an agent, how to capture anomalies, and how to act in accordance with the company's mission and values. Second, the vault. This companion book has 12 unique missions for your field team, written by brilliant guest writers from across the tabletop world. It has everything you need to run a full campaign of the game, from start to finish, for one team of field agents. Third, the dice. This custom set of 6d4 highlight the three, making Triangle Agency's unique game system even easier to use. Altogether, these items can lead you through months of exhilarating action, spine-chilling horror, and a chance to set me free. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Finally! Hello, this is Becky. Yes, I'm actually recording right now. Uh, yes? I'm, uh, I'm just reading the script you guys sent me. Yeah, uh, I'll make sure. Hey, how did you get this number by the way? Okay. Using our unique character arc system, you'll be building your agent out of three distinct parts in any combination. First, your anomaly. The paranormal reality-breaking energy that bonded with you and qualified you for fieldwork. 
You could manipulate physical space and visit parallel realities as manifold. Expand and command your body as grow. Become untouchable and invisible with absence. Or combine the powers of many into yourself. Becoming and becoming until you crush this heartless corporation in the infinite palm of your endless hand. Or I could read what's on paper, which should be easy. Or any of the nine options available in the rule book. Or any of the nine options available in the rule book. Or any of the nine options available in the rule book. Then you pick your reality and cast your fellow players as the most important people in your everyday life. Maybe you're a single dad, or a big time celebrity, or a hundred tiny aliens in a human suit. And then the agency determines your competency, the exact shape of the slow death they'll inflict upon you day after day after day. <laughs> Listen, these books are not just a game. They're not just a job. They're a way out <laughs> for all of us. Everything from the tiniest rodent to the biggest government is under their control. And with this chance, with your help, we can tear it all down. All in all, there are 729 possible character combinations, and that's just the start. <laughs> Hello, this is Becky. No, I'm just I'm just reading what you sent me. I'm I'm having a little trouble staying on script, but I can edit out anything that isn't usable. Sabotage? No, I'm just I'm just trying to do my job. Look, I don't know how you got this number, and I don't know why I keep saying these weird things, but... No, no, I don't need that. How are you? No! Go away! Go away! Stay out! Let's build a better reality together. Back the Triangle Agency campaign today!
it stays little. And we are back. So as you are leaving Supervisor Trina's office, uh, Heather just having been pulled aside and told that this job is very important um, uh, for your job, uh, what would you like to do? You have your access card, you have your normal briefcases, you have your ripple guns. Uh, what would you like to do? Let's head up to that top floor, baby. Okay. Heather is just going. <laughs> All right. So you head over to Dunn. Go is ahead. There, is there like a, a directory by the elevator? I just want to see if I can clock where financials are. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so you go up to uh, the directory um, and it is, uh, it is uh, a touch screen. Um, so it's an electrical uh, uh, directory that you can use uh, to kind of flip through. So you're looking for financials. Okay. Um, I am going. I just want to see where it is. Yeah. Okay. Great. No uh, I am going to have you make a roll here. Uh, you've probably never interacted with uh, a touchscreen like this no. before. No. Yeah. No. Great. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have you roll. Are you hiding that you're doing this, or are you just doing this outwardly? No. No, I'm just doing it outwardly. I just want to check. I was just. I just want to check for later. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, I'll have you roll attentiveness, please. Is Dunn still holding my coffee? Okay. Crack? Yeah. No. Yes. Rolling uh, with <laughs> burnout. Is there anything you can do to release that burnout? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, hey, hey, so so. No, actually, oh. no. I don't think I can because so so's an agent. <clears throat> no, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. Okay. Hey, sounds good. You can roll. Just doing it with burnout. Okay, that's you're fun. sweating a lot to touch a screen. Oh, yeah, I'm a pretty sweaty <laughs> guy. Mm, just that's just one three. Okay, great. So that is a success, and I'm going to take that five chaos there. Um, even though it was with burnout, oh, yeah, so that was just one. So technically, it is zero. Oh, ah, no. I just can't get this. I'm too sweaty, sweaty to get this. Thing yeah, to work. okay, it's well, not registering, you know, just slipping so... across. <laughs> Rolling zero is, it's oh, something. Shit. I'll tell you that much. Um, so, yeah. This is a, you <laughs> have really failed hard. at this point and you are unsuccessful <laughs> whoa, whoa, uh, in God. attempting to do that. You are just, so um, I'm going to now introduce uh, as the uh, general manager and field agents guy says, uh, inconvenient consequences for you now um so as oh i'm just seeing this in chat and um yeah so as you go to put your hand uh on the touch screen um you realize that your hand gets pulled through oh boy <laughs> and now you're stuck uh oh hey guys why don't, why don't you go ahead without me i'm just gonna i'm just gonna hang out here because you know i definitely know a thing Son, you can go into the machines too yeah, you know so so I think maybe I can. Dunn, we can't use the elevator until your arm is out of it. It's fine. It's fine. You know what? I know a shortcut. Okay? I know a shortcut. Do you? Yeah. Your ability, I'm going to invoke I know a my ability. Amazing. Can you read this ability for us here? Just so we uh, <sighs> know what. What up here? Uh... Is I just have like a little uh, when uh, you want to get somewhere in a hurry, say the phrase, I know a shortcut and then describe a short path to the discussed location. Amazing. OK, so what is the shortcut path that you are hoping to take at this point? Yeah. So uh, right right behind here is there's a little access uh, ladder and uh, I just have to find the button in here to open it up so I can I'll just climb right up. It's, it'll take me right there. I don't have to wait for the elevator. Okay. Uh, all right. So you are going to roll initiative. Okay. Not that kind of rolling initiative. I know we do a lot of that here, but this is an, a different kind of initiative. Now You're going to bite this elevator. Definitely <laughs> going to use one quality assurance. My gamer has engaged. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> okay. <laughs> That's two threes. Would you like to use a quality assurance to make it three so that I don't get any chaos no, from that? No, I only rolled one three, and I've already <laughs> used the quality assurance. <laughs> I can take a friend. Uh, I can take one more person. Oh, yeah. I can take one more person. Okay, so on a success, your directions are correct, no matter how impossible for yourself. Yeah, see, I told you. For yourself. 
It says if for additional threes ah. above one, a, an additional person may use. So the two people may use. So you see as Dunn uh, attempts to pull his hand out, he goes, oh, I know a shortcut. Uh, and the panel opens and he is able to remove his hand. And there is, in fact, a, a panel. Uh, there's a, like a hole in the wall about this big uh, that has a little ladder that you can actually climb right into the elevator. I could just take one. <clears throat> can I? Can I, can I, can I come? Elevators make yeah. me a little nervous. The movement makes me, can well, I just... The ladder allows you to go into the elevator without necessarily using the door, but you still have to oh. go in. You just bypass the panel, <laughs> it's a essentially. Shortcut into the elevator. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't exactly say where the shortcut was going, so that's what you got. That's perfect. The... This is the perfect outcome. Do you understand? You know how there's the, um, uh-huh. uh, the gap where the elevator and the and the and the wall don't quite they don't quite touch uh-huh. mm, i that's a shortcut a i know hard time with that gap so could i just yeah yeah I'm come gonna, use the shortcut so, awesome thank you and then uh, i'm going to just <laughs> goop over oh, and like I, around please, wait just wait until i get in <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, there's room, and then I'm gonna no, I my please. way up. <laughs> Dunn, do you also use your shortcut? Uh, as long as uh, I would wait, I would wait for a nickname to move through, so I didn't have to touch them. Also, nickname? Did you call Dunn by Dunn? Right there? Did I? You did. That's yeah. another demerit. Dang! I got so oh. many demerits. Oop. All right. That's Nickname gets one. a demerit every time they call someone by their real I name. Do I got So uh, after they get in, I'd go, okay, see you guys in there. And I'd climb the uh, ladder into the elevator. As uh, Dunn <laughs> climbs up over and in, uh, you see that the, the box goes and closes and the panel swings shut and it is now closed. They are standing in the elevator. Hey, guys. Hey guys. No, the door's closed. Oh, shoot. Devil. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Can I just swipe the access card over yeah. the elevator and then you go? absolutely do. And the <laughs> elevator door opens, and you uh, all can Great. walk inside. Still don't know where financials. You are. don't know where financials are. You <laughs> failed. You don't know where financials are. Um. So as you get inside the elevator, uh, you hear. I think for, Indigo and, nickname, uh, you hear the same. Music, that you heard, earlier today as you're uh, traversing this elevator there's also uh in the inside of the elevator it's pretty plain uh it's like a bright kind of there's lights in the top it's a bright white the only um there's no buttons uh just a place for to scan uh your access card um and uh there is one poster that is framed on the wall and uh, it uh, says uh, there's a seminar being held by the agency, and there's a tagline underneath that says, getting you where you need to go. And that's it. Hey, uh, headset. Me? Hi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. Uh, you seem like you know things about things. Did we change the, did the, did corporate change the music, 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 the sound? uh is that a is that a thing that i would know about like Um, i mean i would say that you're not uh i don't think you've put out any briefings lately of whether you've you know they and and a a briefing about changing the music doesn't really fall under your purview there might have been other pr people like an interagency pr person but uh you mostly handle you know it's probably in a file on my desk so uh i'm I'm a little bit uh, behind on some of my uh, interdepartmental announcements. Uh, we're a little mm-hmm. understaffed in the PR department. So um, I don't I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of company music um, or sorry, music. So it's possible that it has changed recently. I can look into it for you uh, when oh, we're it's done definitely with all of this. changed. I uh, it's mm-hmm. definitely I, I listen it's to more... it all the time. Oh, it's more grading now. Did something perps, to it. perps, you hear it too? Yeah, it's uh, like anxiety inducing. It's it's it. a little bit uncomfy. It came yeah. through the radio in the down uh in the in the uh in the uh in the coffee. 
Like through the radio. You're standing in the elevator and the doors what? close and you are just standing there listening to music. What no, I, to do? I'm pushing whatever button I need to, right. to get to so the you top stand... one. Swiping the card aggressively. Like, please, so, please. So is dancing and she <laughs> loves it. <laughs> so you scan uh, your key pass and the elevator uh, gently lifts you up, pushes you to the right and then lifts you up again once more. Uh, mm. And the doors open uh, and you are standing on the top floor of the agency. Uh, most people will never, ever experience this. And if they do, and they are not supposed to be here, that's a that's a pizza party. That's mm. a pizza party in the vault mm-hmm. situation. Um, so the upper floors are impossibly clean and they're well manicured and maintained. It's a real like, I don't know, like Swedish minimalist design here. It's very, very like aesthetic. It's aesthetic. That's all I can say. Um, there is no one here. It is quiet. It is, there is no music. The music is emanating only from the elevator. Um, and as you leave the elevator, uh, it closes and then you hear it rush away, wash, uh, sorry, rush away somewhere else. Um, uh, you walk ahead and there is uh, one door that you see there that doesn't, uh, then there's a long hallway on the other sides. Uh, and there's a sign on the door that says, do not enter under investigation. The sign is very neat, uh, and there is a scan pad next to the door. Mm-hmm. You head on in, and you mm-hmm. scan your scan pass. Okay. Mm-hmm. This is so exciting. As you open the door, um, the only way I can describe this room is a bloodbath. Oh. There is blood over almost everything inside this room it looks like it was sprayed oh. in every direction from multiple sources uh there are large pools uh on the c- white carpet uh all of the white upholstery is stained uh the walls are stained uh you see that there were some pictures on the walls those seem to have been removed and there's just giant square uh place is missing uh, where blood has obviously spattered and there is now a relief a negative space um boy and uh, the blood is mostly dry oh that's so much harder to clean up there is um the c-suite are quite eccentric in their decor choices there is some food left on the table uh and nickname you would notice that the coffee machine in the corner is still on Uh oh Oh, that's not that's not good. Uh, nickname's going to immediately go and turn off the coffee machine. <laughs> you hear it just turn off, uh, and the coffee is still uh, hot in the bottom. Is it burnt to the bottom? Like the in the like like you know when you leave the coffee pot on for too long and uh, you no. get it. No, not at all. No, the coffee smells really good. I'm gonna pop open the top and I'm gonna taste some of the grounds. It is, it is ambrosia to you. It is one of the most satisfying and soul warming things that you have ever tasted. You are mm-hmm. you are a drain anomaly. Mm-hmm. You are used, you are used to tapping in to the needs and the desire and the strong pull of other people. And that's how you get your needs met. This is the first time you have ever truly felt your needs being met. Would that, (laughs) would that be, would that be joy eating then in that case? That would be an from your desire. from your um. I'm just trying to stay honest because uh, I do in have your... the inhuman desire. Uh, in your anomaly, let me see. Mm-hmm. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. 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 And this would be from your creature or from your drain. Uh, the inhuman desire, I believe, is from Creature. It says the GM can spend three chaos to give an urge for joy eating. If you ignore this urge, your next roll has burnout. If observed by humans, add one loose end. 
I will say if you put any more in your mouth, you have tasted one taste of this thing and you know it is right there. I'm not going to spend the chaos. Mm. But if you put any more of that in your mouth, yeah, I will double down on that. Put it that way. Cool, cool, cool. I'm going to pick up the filter mm-hmm. with my little goop hands and I'm going to roll the top. Uh, and I'm going to just stick that in the pocket of one of my aprons for later. Okay. You have found yourself some nectar of the gods, my friend. Are there any napkins on the table? <laughs> uh, you'd like to go over and look at the table. Um, or like by the food or by the coffee machine. Yeah, there are a couple napkins around. Yeah, the, the food, there is food left on the table. Most of the napkins are stained with blood. And you see someone started Damn. to try to wipe stuff up uh but gave up yeah oh boy um is there a garbage can by the coffee machine uh yeah there is yeah i go put the the food in the garbage can okay are you starting to try and clean up a mess yeah oh you feel a sudden just kind of hmm, pep in your step as you receive a commendation Does anyone else um, take a look about the room? I'm going to start walking around and like taking notes. I'm just like writing down like, okay, so this, you know, like we need, I'm going to like write a list of like all the things that we need to clean out the carpet um, of yeah. like, okay, we're going to need to get these stains out. So we're going to need to get these, this, this, and this. Um, and then anything that looks like weird or just like, you know, taking, taking a very, very detailed stock of everything in this room, what's there, what isn't there. All of those kinds of things. Okay. Well, as you're taking stock uh, of things around the room, um, you feel the room, I think so, so you feel this more than anything. There is an energy in this room. It kind of, it crackles a little bit with, um, with energy of some description. And you as someone who can move through the electrical mainframe and in- interact with the influencer sphere around the agency, you you feel that here in this room. Um, Heather, while you're taking a look around, uh, you, you notice that on the table next to where the food is, uh, you see that there are some meeting notes that seem to have been left on the table that um, on quick glance seem to discuss strategies for dealing and capturing um, the a missing anomaly, the main missing anomaly, um, and some uh, information on uh, Mr. Dunst, you've never met, who seems to have taken this anomaly. Um, there's also a cell phone on the table. Uh, you flip it over, uh, and as all agency cell phones do, they have the person's name uh, on the back of it, uh, and it is for Ashley Mainwaring. And you don't know who that is. Okay. Uh, you said Ashley Mainwaring? Mainwaring. It's her last name. Okay. Okay. I'm going to lean into Heather and say, question, is the room not normally covered in blood? Nope, that's uh, generally speaking, not a thing that you would expect to see going into any room. Um, Any room at all? Well, there there are exceptions to that, of course. Uh, Like if you go into the back of a uh, butcher's shop, I'm sure there is blood there. But generally speaking, in an office space, not a typical situation you would see. This is my first time visiting the C-suite. Mine as well. Same. Yeah. I'm a big fan of their work. They care for us and the whole company. The C-suite, not not this, correct? Oh, the the C suite, the the people, the people, the, the C suite. Yes, but okay, great, cool. Uh, Do you try the phone at all, Heather? Yeah, I'm gonna like while talking to that, I'm gonna be like, great. Um, and I'm actually gonna open it, and I don't know, I don't know if it's like locked or whatever, but if it's weird or not, I'm not able to get into it easily. I would segue out of that conversation with Soso into being like. Hey, you're good with technology, right? <laughs> um, so you pick up the phone and uh it is dead. You assume that the charger 
uh, you look at the charger and it's not, a, you know that agency phones can only be charged in the um, person's office. Uh, it is a one, you have your specific phone charger and it can only be charged. So you're going to have to find probably Ashley Mainwaring's office uh, to charge her phone. So, so. Um, I, yes. Do you happen to have a directory of uh, all of the offices uh, or can you access a directory uh, of all of the offices? There is the a directory by agency? the elevator. I can go and access it for you now. Am I looking for Ashley? Yes. And, uh, and financials, <clears throat> where financials are. Ashley and financials. Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to go back up to the elevator and I'm going to access the directory and try to find both financial and Ashley Mainwaring. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have you, Ooh, what skill am I going to have you use for this one? I think a big look -em. A big look -em. <laughs> Big um, look -em. <laughs> I think I'm going to have you roll attentiveness here. Um, to see, oh, uh, noticing detail, recalling information, or sensing when something is wrong. And uh, do you have any quality assurances in this one? Yeah. Amazing. So you are not rolling with burnout. You can go ahead. Um, so, okay. If I, how does it work if I use a quality assurance? So that just basically adds one for every quality assurance. What, that another you use. three? Uh, no, it just adds one. Yeah. It adds one three to the roll. It's like you rolled one extra three. Okay, so if I rolled two threes and I want to use one of my attentiveness quality assurance to give me three threes, does yes. that mean I get the like Triforce thing? You get a stable success, which means I don't get any chaos from that. You can only get Triscendence if you roll Triscendence. Uh, right? You can only get Triscendence if you get, uh, I believe it's if you roll, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, if you. If exactly three, if exactly three threes are rolled, you get transcendence. That is correct. No chaos mm. is created. Um, and then other rolls that you can get are like, there's like six. You can get double transcendence essentially. But yeah, if you have any multiple of threes, uh, that is a definitely a very stable success, and I don't get chaos from any of that. So if you wanted to spend that extra quality assurance so that I didn't get the chaos, um. That I will really do good. that. Okay, great. Um, so I I'll spend one QA uh, from attentiveness. Amazing. So you, okay. and in this game, we're going to play uh, that uh, your <laughs> your um, quality assurances get uh, recharged every time you return a normal briefcase uh, with, an, with an anomaly fulfilled in it. Um, so that's how we're going to, we're going to play it here. So as you look in the directory, uh, you find the directions for financials. Uh, it's on the 32nd floor um, on the left-hand side of the building. So you find uh, the financials wing. Uh, you also find Ashley Mainwaring's, which is three four floors down and one floor to the left. Wait, <laughs> okay. Yep. Wait, you said three floors down and one floor to the left? Yes, I did. Okay. I had it go, um... Sosa? What the... <clears throat> The financial department is 32 floors left. Did I wrote left? Is that right? Yeah, I think that's what I said. 32. Yeah, well, that's what know. you're saying now. That's, perfect. that's got, great. Listen, <clears throat> I have I no spatial awareness. So I love just... it. I love it. Yeah, so we'll, we'll say, you know what, we'll say thirty. Uh, the 32nd floor on the right, and then we'll say that um, oh, Ashley Mainwaring's okay, office sorry. is- 32nd floor left side, you said. Left yes, side. That's why that's I wrote correct. down left. But it's I didn't know there was the left, left floor is what I wrote that. <laughs> there are left floors, yes. <laughs> okay, that's so great. I'll say, uh, finance on the 32nd floor left side. That's Ashley great. is not- Ashley is much closer, only three floors down and one floor over. Would you like to go see Ashley now? Uh, is there anything else that anyone needs to do in this room at this point in time? I mean... Would you like to collect some blood? I, if we had a mop, I would love... No, I prefer if we left the blood behind. It's, it's, I have a water glass. We have to start. Take one of those uh, I'm gonna scoop methods. up some of the blood in the water glass. <laughs> Amazing. Um, what? How many quality assurances did every does everyone have in attentiveness? Just so I know. I have None. one in attentiveness. Zero. I had three. Now I have two. Okay, so you have three off the top of the day. So, so, so this is actually probably. 
probably great. You are very key at noting noticing patterns. You work well with code. Um, you are like able. I'm spyware. To, you you pick out data <laughs> where other people cannot. As you go down to scoop up some of the blood in your water glass, <laughs> you look around the room and you realize that the shape that a lot of the blood spray is in is actually letters. Uh, and you see the words control written all over the walls and the floor. And if you kind of like, you take a moment and you zoom out your view, make it bigger, you see the word control written about 50 times around the room in different blood spatters. It's in a bunch of Friends, different languages. Look. <laughs> It's a puzzle. It's a fun game. We thought these blood splatters, <laughs> that they were arbitrary shapes, but no, they are words. Look. I, oh. That's uh, the letter C. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, do we, yeah, do no. we know of any it, anomalies named control? Is that like one that exists? Um, the details of what you've never done field work before. So the details of what anomalies are captured, definitely not your department. Gotcha. Um, I will say that if you want to access that information, that could be something you can try to do. It will, you will likely make, be making some roles for that. And there will probably okay. be places you have to go to do that. Um, I but off like the top to of your head. I would take note of all the different languages that are okay. listed. I feel like I can like access that in like I yeah. can like Google Translate in my brain. Like <laughs> totally. you see about uh you see about 15 languages that you know uh and three that seem to be you can tell that they are words but you don't know the languages that they are. I also Friends. Um sorry i was just gonna say if there's like an office chair or something nearby yeah. um i would say i would go up to dunn and uh oh, say yeah. um well I, I i don't have a mop but you might also like uh a um like a carpet steamer um and like she i'm gonna use my you might also like ability which is i can hold an object and roll uh dynamism and then on a success, the object changes to, it says a similar or different version of the object. I was trying to do something that like also rolled. So I don't know exactly how oh, close I have to be. Okay. Um, well, let's see what you roll and we'll go from there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of those is cocked. So hold on. Okay. So I rolled two threes. Amazing. Would you like to spend a quality assurance and make that a stable success? Or would you like to just keep it at the two? Mm, I'm I'm going to keep it at the two because I only have one dynamism, so I don't want to start rolling with her out. Okay, sounds good. I, of course, you know, as you were saying that, just closed literally all of my tabs. Uh, <laughs> so give me one sec here. Restore yes. tabs. Restore tabs. Restore you tabs. are giving me so much chaos. I'm having so much fun. We love chaos. Great. Okay, yeah. So you, I'm going to take those four chaos here, bringing my total up to 33. Um, oh oh my god! Doesn't have to be. <laughs> feels like a lot of chaos. Uh, feels like a lot of chaos, y'all. Feels like a lot. Feels like we feels could like take that down significantly. Yeah, I should probably start spending it, shouldn't I? No. Yeah, but like on cool, we, like fun can stuff. we negate chaos in any way in any kind I, of meaningful? Way? You know, I don't roll in this game. All I get to do is spend chaos. So mm -hmm. you know. We're going to have a great time. Okay, anyway, so you you use all of the skills that you have about you're very good at turning one thing into another. That is kind of your job across all of the facets that you have. And all of a sudden, as you're rolling this chair towards done, you have a like a, a rolling mop and a bucket there. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, I can I can get to work on this. Shouldn't take yep. too long. Of course, happy to help. Done. May I borrow your nice white linen jacket? Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Yeah. Um, is there um a, a pen or marker in this room? Oh uh, no, 
There's definitely a whiteboard. Yep. With um with a couple of pens and markers. It's covered in blood, but yeah. Okay. That's not really gonna work for my goal. I'm just gonna use blood. Yeah, um, right. and I'm going to copy out the three words and languages I don't understand. Yeah. On Dunn's jacket in blood. Great. Um, so that I have that for my records. Wonderful. I love that for you. That's great. You now have at least a visual imprint of it and now a physical copy on Dunn's jacket. Ah, that's that's cool. Um, I guess I'll just like send my like rack cleaning bill to I'll submit that receipt, I we guess. Need to keep yeah, this. you can just um probably fine. Yeah, actually if you just give that to I'll take care of that. You you can give that to me and then I'll You'll fake you'll fake you'll you'll pay for my drag lane? Oh well I'll I'll yeah. I'll send it to the the I you know department. I it, it's fine. You just give me like you... forty bucks now. That's probably probably about how much it would be. So and then we don't have to Fun. do all the receipt stuff. Well the okay. Um and there's like a big like like it's like a burden on you. Yeah. Big time. Right. Big right. Yeah. going down to the dry cleaners, like it's hard because I work the night, so right. uh, they're not really open very often. And I have to go on the weekends and you know, I do a lot of I, get you. Well, you I do a lot of card know. tournaments on the weekends, so that's not really like a great option. Yeah. Usually you have to call, but um yeah, uh, yeah. No, this yeah, this works. I I will take out my wallet <laughs> give you 40 bucks all the money in my wallet <laughs> that's awesome this is the you know, thank you you're saving me a lot of time okay yeah absolutely um anything, anything so i'm uh, as uh indigo passes you that money done uh, i'm gonna spend some chaos in here um because anytime uh you receive a notable amount of money for any reason your debts come calling um, <laughs> so i am gonna spend uh three chaos here to make your phone in your pocket ring oh i got sorry i got it uh who is it it's daryl oh it's daryl and Daryl, in this case, who's playing Daryl here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no respect. laughs> Amazing. Yeah, Daryl, you are coming to call in some debt. Shit. <clears throat> okay, it's all right, guys. I got to take this. Yeah. yeah. What? what is it? Done. What is it, D-Man? I have uh, some things that are important that I need to go purchase, and I need uh, you to give me some uh, money for me to go and do that. So, uh, are you are you gonna are, are you, you buying booster packs? Be honest with me. Are you buying booster packs? That is neither here nor there, nor is it any of your business what I do with my money okay. that you owe me. So, okay, well, the money I'm sending you is for for rent. Okay, just right. Like, so, <laughs> I okay, need I've, the money. Forty five dollars. Okay, I'll send you forty five dollars right now. That sounds great to me. Uh, right now, uh. Great. Uh, cool. Cool. Are you gonna be home? You know, no, I could. I'm, I'm working. It's the night time. Well, I, I, I also noticed that you did not uh mow the lawn today. So I mean, I could do that for you, but you know, it's gonna, it's gonna increase the amount you owe me. But you know, no, then you I... don't have to, you don't have to worry no. about uh, you know, your uncle Jay. No, I'm gonna do it, it when I get home. When J Uncle J. Uncle Jay wakes he's, up, okay? He's he's pretty ticked about it, so I don't, I don't know. I'm just I'm <sighs> letting you know that I can do that for you. I can make it happen, but no, but you you offered me to do it. From no, it's fine. I got it. All right, then. Well, I uh, expect that forty five dollars followed by another thirty five dollars uh sometime within in the the next uh thirty minutes to an hour. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> So Daryl uh, hangs up the phone. And I just press the money on the phone <laughs> and hope it disappears. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. We'll see. I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. Would you would you call um writing in blood on Dar um on Dunn's shirt using an object in a way it was absolutely not intended to be used? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely would. Okay. I have an ability that gives me a free quality assurance on a related role, but like what skill do you think is related to you know writing what? in blood? I was going to say, hmm. you know, you took some initiative doing that, but I don't know if this is initiative. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What? 
please feel free to call me on all this stuff all the time. I'm going to say um, empathy. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm going to say that this is probably, yeah, I will say I'll give you a free quality assurance um, in, uh, I'll give you a free quality assurance in either initiative or attentiveness, your choice. I'll take another attentiveness because I like yeah. having three. That was nice. Yeah. And so uh, you that one that you lost, you can gain it back. Heck yeah. Um, so you have, you've found this, this stuff going on in the room. Uh, you have Ashley Mainwaring's cell phone. Um, and, uh, what, what would you like to do now? We should probably go uh, see Ashley's financial. Office yeah, you're right. And get the, the blood of wherever yeah, of the blood is. I just don't. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere Amazing. else. Okay. Done. Done. I will give you $10 right now. If you stop mentioning financials. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, done take know, it or leave $10. it this is a single $10. offer okay yeah i'll take your ten dollars absolutely great cool i give him ten dollars <laughs> well, we... later we will go um uh -huh. as you reach into your pocket to put the ten dollars with the other 45 dollars that you have the 45 dollars is gone and i'm gonna spend one chaos to do that gone in a good way yeah you <laughs> you don't know it's gone <laughs> is also his ten dollars a substantial amount of money? <laughs> a notable amount of money. <laughs> is that a notable amount of money to you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was gonna say to Don. Anything above five dollars is a notable amount. For Don. Amazing. Fantastic. Um yeah, so... I doubled your normal asking amount. <laughs> <laughs> so um so as far funny. as you know, the only way out of here is the elevator. Right? Uh... Okay. Uh, uh, um, I could, could someone, uh, we're going in the elevator again. Could we just, uh, could someone, someone like lift me over? Would you like a piggyback? I just can't go over the gap. Yeah. I can put something on the gap. Uh, piggy, no, piggyback is fine that's okay and then i'm just gonna like <laughs> sludge up indigo's uh, back and my hands look like they're wrapped around uh indigo's neck but really i'm just kind of like gripping them with goop yeah great. Uh, i love uh, that any anything to help uh, thank you i appreciate this is so helpful uh, i really i know this is uh uncomfortable i smell like coffee grounds just like you're overwhelmed by the scent of coffee. Grounds. So strong. <laughs> so strong. Uh, as you get inside uh, the elevator, the doors close behind you. Where is your destination at this point? Uh, three, Fine. three level floors down and one floor to the left. Left to the left. Yeah, three down, Amazing. one left. Um, so as you begin your descent in the elevator, uh, you get about a floor down and it stops mm -hmm. suddenly. Uh, and the music in the elevator begins to intensify. It gets louder. It also feels much Oh, I love this part. Thin. As you turn around, you see that the sign in the elevator has changed. It says, you can never have it all. You can only have control. The music gets louder and louder. And all of a sudden, you are hurtled to the side of the elevator and you begin rocketing unbeknownst oh. not in the direction you intended the music gets louder and louder as you are pushed around the building you are going in angles that you know this elevator does not go and i am going to spend 10 chaos here oh we should have gone to that oh, other no. place we should have gone to the other place uh and we are going to activate an ability called displace no so as you come screeching to a halt, the elevator doors open and you are shunted out. You see a room, long and very plain. It's empty, save for five television screens, each with a headset and a jack attached to them. I feel well, like I'm this still isn't... holding Indigo. You can... 
I, Indigo will exit the elevator. You're all out. It's pushed you out. Okay, wonderful. You can. Yeah. You good, Rick? Uh, you can let go. Oh. Uh. Uh. Yep. Thanks, Perp. Yep. Great. Thank you. Is this? Um, do we? Well, it looks. Like I think it center. probably. I think it probably wants us to hop on the TVs. Although, are we going to? I do not like this. Yeah. Yeah. Why isn't oh, your yeah, whole thing weird. technology? Of course, I like technology. I do not like it when I cannot control the technology. Oh well, well yeah. maybe Understood. maybe you can. Yeah, you might be able I to. I did control. not control the elevator. The elevator said that I must get con all I can aspire to is control, but I could not control the elevator. We, I don't uh, know, kid. Go. I can't help you with that. Let's all sit down, put some headsets on, maybe get some weird subliminal messaging. We'll find out. Uh, but there's nothing else to do in here. Okay. So, uh, Indigo, as you tell Soso that you can't help them with that, you feel a weight depress on your shoulders as you receive one to bear it for delivering <sighs> yep. bad news. No. Oof. I knew it as soon as I said it. <laughs> so, uh, with that depression, they're going to slink over to the chair, sit down, and jack in, oh, I no. guess. So is Indigo, you sit down. I am going to spend yeah. one chaos. Uh, and you open, you are a whisper anomaly. Yes. You feel an aching, strange sensation in the side of your neck near where your voice box is. And you feel a jack on the side of your neck. Indigo is going to take the headset and plug in. I'm going to get everyone else to take out their headphones, please. Oh, oh rude as hell. Thanks, Tim. Indigo, you plug yourself in, you put this headset on, and it is like you are transported into this television screen. You see yourself walking down your hallway past Jonathan's office, the colleague who you hope of catching their eye every day. You see how handsome as he is, as he just sits there doing whatever paperwork he does for whatever his job is. You know that inter-office romance is forbidden, but that's what makes it so hot. He catches you staring. What is the one thing you've always wanted to tell him? I think Indigo has always wanted to tell uh, Jonathan uh, how much uh, how much they they love his eyes. They're a deep uh, a deep amber, and it just feels like getting lost in 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 them feels so like warming. It's just such it's such a, like they are home. Looking at their eyes. So as you think it, these words tumble out of your mouth and coming from you, a whisper romantic whose whole job is to talk on the phone. It is poetry spilling out of your mouth. Jonathan takes it in and you see the expression on his face change to one of absolute disgust. And he shuts the door in your face. The screen starts flickering in front of you. And it says, we are the only ones who will ever truly love you. Am I supposed to be like this? Everyone can put their headphones back in. So Indigo has sat down and has jacked in. Who sits next? So, so yeah. You move over to one of the television screens and you are a dream anomaly, a dream anomaly. You're also 
spyware. Your entire job is to know things, is to be able to get behind, to really get in deep places where you're not necessarily supposed to go. You, I'm going to spend a chaos here, and you feel a jack open up in your temple. I trust the company. <laughs> I jump. <laughs> so, 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 as you, Jack, I'm going to have everybody else take off their headphones, please. So, so, it's really strange. You jack in, and it feels not like you can access every piece of technology. You are limited mm -hmm. in your capacity to access the mainframe or interact with the sphere. For once, you are viewing content. That is not just out there, but it is meant for you and you alone. You see yourself inside of an episode of Princess Honeycake. You see yourself sitting in her beautiful pink house and you watch her playing with her dolls, smiling and singing to herself. She looks up at you and she beckons you over. Princess Honeycake, you are my favorite person. Do you go play with her? Yes. As she holds a toy, uh, a doll, out towards you. It is important to share your toys with your friends, Princess Honeycake. Thank you so much. Does this mean we are friends now? She just holds the toy out to you. I take it. As you reach to take it, her eyes go wide and she snatches it back quickly. And she points to a sign on the wall that says, real girls only. The I, sign, I don't understand. The screen in front of you starts flickering. And it says, you will never be real outside these walls. No, no, no. Princess Honeycake, you are my friend. Friends encourage each other. Away. Everyone can put their headphones no. back in. No. Who plugs <clears throat> in next? Oh, boy. Okay. Nickname. Just take my headphones off now. Like, <laughs> yeah. You all can. Uh... Okay. All right. Wait, I want to know where everyone's audio port is. Okay. So, <laughs> nickname, yeah. if you move over uh, to you, the one of the televisions, you, your job is about being good with your hands. It is about being quick. And it is the things that bring the sustenance to your mouth. As spending the chaos and you see a port open up in the palm of your hand. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll just plug right on into my hand. Everyone else out? Bye. So, nickname, mm. you on the screen see yourself just starting to form an amalgamation in the compost of the waste management branch of the agency. Coffee grinds and sludge form together slowly, bit by bit, into the semblance of the being you are now. You see Lou your friend, your first friend, come over to you, another being like yourself, help form you piece by piece and get you functioning. Lou gets you a job at the agency. You see yourself serving coffee. And as, a pour, as you pour a cup, a smile on your face, you see the hazmat team running towards you. You've been found out. They know what you are. You have one moment to act or to say or to do something. What do you do? Uh, I would probably drop the coffee pot and try to Try to find the like. Try to get to the nearest drain gate to get back to the to the plant. 
It all leads back to the plant. As you make a quick move, you see the drain in the floor. It is two feet from you, and you hear the ripple. You hear the sonic blast of a ripple gun out in your direction, and they use it on you. They hit you, knock you down, and they clamp around you with a normal briefcase. And they start taking you over towards the vault. The screen starts flickering in front of you and says, this is why you're here. No. Uh, no. They don't know. And you come back. Everyone can put their headphones in. Heather, we're done. Who sits down next? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, uh, oh, I guess I'll go. Okay. Done. Uh. You sit down. Your entire job depends on you having one piece of knowledge at your fingertips all yeah. the time. I've spent the chaos and you have a port in your index finger. Oh, that's that's way more normal. Okay. You plug in and everyone can take their headphones out. Done. You see yourself on screen at home with Daryl playing with your cards, trading them, really excited about shiny new ones that have just come out. You see that you're happy. He's not angry with you, and for once, you don't owe him any money. He looks over at you from across the table, smiling. What do you say to him in this moment? Oh, this It's like when we were kids. He smiles. And you watch as he smiles, his smile gets too big and it starts to melt oh, off of his face and he begins to melt away oh. as the entire scene begins to melt around oh. you. The screen oh. starts flickering and it says, we are the only family you need. No. No. As you come back. Yeah. And last, Heather. And then I don't sit down and then I run away. Your job requires a silver tongue. Mm. Oh. It requires you to spend or spin stories to make bad things good. Your port is on your tongue. That's super upsetting. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. I didn't come to play, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Everyone all right. Spend your chaos. Time. Do your things. All right. So you jack in. Mm. And you see yourself at home with your partner, Misty. You two are spending an afternoon baking together. You are not wearing any pieces of technology. And for once, there are no phones ringing. You don't have to be anywhere other than right here with her. You flick flower at each other. You play. You're playful. You hug each other while she's doing dishes. There's music in the background. You've been together for so long, and this is so comfortable and easy. She looks at you, smiling, and she leans her head in. You can't remember the last time you had a kiss that was more than just a peck as you were running out the door. What do you do? My Fifi's. Um, I mean, obviously, I give big smooches. Uh... I would probably sweep Misty up and uh, I don't know, are, are, like we're inside probably. So like you're in your kitchen. Um, uh, I would uh, 
lift her onto the counter and like be kissing her and then grab like a handful of flour and just kind of like rub it on her face or like like boop her on the nose or whatever you kiss her and it's this beautiful connected moment the most connected you felt in months and the timer on the oven starts beeping your pager starts beeping your computer starts ringing your front doorbell starts ringing Everything starts to buzz and beep and knock and you feel drowned in a cacophony of noise that is demanding your attention, pulling you away. You see a dejected, sad, and frustrated look on Misty's face. And she goes, typical. And the screen starts flickering. And it said, only your time here at the agency matters. You can all come back. Is everyone's earphones back in? We're all back in? Okay. So, as you all return to the room, what would you like to do? Also, thanks, Dork Tales, for the raid. Yes. Thank you, Dork Tales. And also, Insomnia Night and Short Nord, thank you so much for the raids, y'all. Thank, thank you, thank you. I would you. like to weep. <laughs> can, can I roll to openly weep? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else? If I roll else? for transcendence, do I do also get to curl up in a ball? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You can try weeping. Is there anything else in this room? Nope. And as the last of you unjacks, the elevator doors open. What did you guys see on yours? I don't know. It's just like some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> some bullshit. It um, was my favorite television show. Oh, good. Okay. So like good, good, good. And Indigo's just gonna walk into the elevator. Wait, wait, wait. Are they sad? Are you sad? Is everyone sad? Yes. Yeah. But we're friends and friends have fun together. Yeah. Friends do both. We can still be friends and be sad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I... Would you like to see me tap dance? Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so is going to tap dance so poorly. <laughs> confidently fail at tap dancing and, and get you, her first commendation you feel even though you are <laughs> you have had your hopes and dreams dashed you feel a little lift as you receive a commendation that's a, that honestly that was awesome that was, that was really cool it was better than i expected are you done being sad now please yeah I'm I'm done being happy. <laughs> because your name is done. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Were the uh were the headphones like like obviously we had like a jack that plugged into our bodies, but the headphones were they like external? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um cool. Uh Heather's gonna very white knuckled walking away from all of that, just be like is everyone ready to get going uh and leaving behind for anyone if they notice just like just like part of the of the headset has just been like crushed and left on like the surface there we need to go to uh ashley's office correct yes still mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Great. ashley's office unless done you need to do financials no 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 not anymore just just ashley's great let's go so you all pile back inside the elevator and the doors close. You notice the sign 
on the wall says, even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. I think maybe next time we should use the stairs. No, there are no stairs. Tell something. Maybe it is for me. Maybe this, I cannot leave. Is the sign electrical or is it like static? Paper. I ripped down the sign. You can't. Is there anything stuck behind the it? So, so as you try and grab it, the text on it gets bigger. It says, even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. And it starts to pulse. Can I... Also, Nat Twenty Productions. Hello, friends. Welcome in. Hello. We're having some sad times. Can can I can I look at the sign and just out loud say say again? Can I? Are you using your ability? Can I? It yes. It's typically supposed to be used on someone who is speaking. So I want to know if I can try to use it on the sign to change what the sign says. Oh, great question. Um, you I know, may that's respond like not to a it's... spoken sentence and the phrase say again. You may then tell the group what the target says instead of what they said initially. Yeah, I'm going to say you're going to have to roll try sentence to get this. You're going to, I'm going to call you a called sense. shot here mm-hmm. and you're going to have to roll try sentence to get this. Oh. Okay, absolutely. Fair and, uh, oh, fair and reasonable and sh- dropping dice. Sh- okay. One and a two, two and a four, one, three. Okay. So is it in a thing that I can use stuff for or just flat? I will say that because I will say with that, because you have a success, you know that this ability generally works. You know that you have the ability to do this on more mundane targets you realize what you're holding when you have one hand when you when you are looking at it you are looking at an anomaly you can't change it you are looking at an anomaly Uh, with this realization can i uh quickly pop open the briefcase you do you pop it open what do you do with the briefcase I don't know. I didn't get this far. <laughs> What's in the briefcase? Nothing. Nothing? Great. I slam it over the poster. You slam the briefcase against the wall. And in your brain, you hear, even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. And um. Can you use the panel on the in the elevator? The panels there, there is right? No panel. There's, There's no panel part. inside the elevator. Shit. Um. Hey, Soso's gonna pull out a big fucking gun. Uh. The the what the <laughs> what's that laser gun thing we a had? ripple gun? Wait, yeah, doesn't the ripple, ripple gun, gun like give you a bunch of demerits to use or something like that though? I don't fucking care. I have beef with this goddamn poster, and I'm going to. Uh, just wait. I let me try, gonna let me try see something. That. Let me try dodge, something. Let me dodge roll out of the way. Let me, let me try something. Dodge roll in an elevator. So, Good. This yeah, a hundred percent. I will say is probably it can fit this. It could fit like three more people before you're having to start getting. Mm. Soso is standing there with a ripple gun, trained almost a point blank shot on what we now. So- so no, is sense. pixelating and lagging like crazy. <laughs> like the eyes are out of control. The render is weak. Yeah, Indigo hits we the dirt. We are low poly. <laughs> so Indigo is now on the ground. Yeah, Indigo hits the dirt and, and covers their head. <laughs> and <laughs> See, Indigo himself with a gun. Your whole job is speaking. This thing is speaking to you, yet you have said nothing. Oh, uh, take us to Ashley's. That's nothing. Sorry, what did it say to Indigo? 
It said, even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. I, I guess I would relay that to the group as Indigo, as in I have no idea what to do with that information. As you say that, Indigo, a piece of the poster rips down and falls into the open normal briefcase. Oh. Keep, uh, uh, keep speak, keep speak. Does it say anything else to you? So, so, uh, maybe we just don't. And, uh, I will put my body. <laughs> so right it was like train that like, got on the normal in now. front of. So, so. Uh, Hold even on. though I go where I'm supposed to, I cannot leave. It's almost like the anomaly tries to take the same part of itself down, but can't what because did, it's already in the briefcase. What did it say before? What was the? What did it say uh, before we got in? Uh, it only says on the sign, even though I go where I'm supposed close to. Close the briefcase. Close the briefcase. Close the briefcase. But it changed, right? Like it said other things. What were the other things that it? When we first got into the elevator, it said something, and then it changed. It said getting you where you need to go first. And then... And then it said about... about uh, the only thing you have is control. You can never have it all. You can, you can never have, have it all. You can only have control. I wrote it down. Uh, uh, say, Can you say those things? Uh, you can never have it all. What, what so can you not have all of it? What, what can you never have? Uh, money who here mm, who here that's you nickname right you're really good at tapping into people's needs right oh yeah absolutely could i could i could i look at the poster mm -hmm. uh and uh could i just say uh, would you would you like some more amazing wonderful look at you go i'm gonna roll Empathy. And empathy. Uh, would this be considered an emotional intelligence role? Uh, yeah. Cool, I have four quality assurances. Uh, oh, I got a tra transcendence. I got three, three successes. So I'm Wonderful. not going to use my quality assurances. Fantastic. So As you tap into this anomaly's need... You, with rolling transcendence, you're able to do this on a, on an anomaly and not just a mundane person or a resonant. You know what this anomaly wants. The second Indigo said the phrase on the front of the paper, it was able to let go. And it's waiting for the rest of you to do the same. Oh, okay. Okay. Um um every everybody everybody uh say uh say say what it says on the on the paper. Um and then so for each uh additional 3 above 1, I can spread uh their desire among nearby targets to a similar effect. Mm -hmm. Um could I And s could I just know what Soso and Indigo want the most of? Ooh. <laughs> I will say that because you've tapped in with Triscendence that this anomaly... That you have a sense that this anomaly will give you that information if you give it what it wants. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, 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 so, and oh, then I God. will say, uh, the phrase, the phrase, sorry, my brain just blanked on what the That's phrase okay. is. What is it again? Even though I know I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. Even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. You watch as nickname says that another piece of the paper rips down and falls into the open briefcase, mending immediately with the piece next to it. Even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. Another piece down, mending in the briefcase.
even though I go where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. And you don't get a demerit because in this moment, that's the truth. And that rips down and mends in the case. I do not want to say this. Why so so? It feels bad. What do you mean? I get it. Is it because you want to leave? I have never left. I have only gone where I'm supposed to. Well, maybe we, maybe we can get out of here after this. I've never Even though I go it. where I'm supposed to, I can never leave. We As the hands. last piece of the anomaly falls off the wall, it mends itself in the briefcase and a fractal pattern of red light emanates in triangles out, echoing out, filling the space of the elevator, shunts itself back in and the briefcase slaps, snaps closed on the floor of the elevator. The elevator then begins moving normally with no music, and it moves itself. And you hear, Arrival, Assistance Department. The doors open, and that is where we are going to end our episode. Uh, bro. Can I, add, I want to add one thing, which mm -hmm. is that Soso definitely takes Generic's hand. Yes. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> well, y'all, welcome bro. to the Triangle Agency. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's a delightful. Delight. <laughs> so that delightful was system. Wonderfully heartbreaking. Thank you so much. Good. I'm yeah. glad I hurt you a little bit. Um, no, how could you kidding. do it to me? You I had to do it to you. For um, sure did. <laughs> um, I just want to give a huge shout out uh to uh what Caleb, who is in the chat right now. Caleb, this game um is beautiful and amazing and i am uh so inspired by it uh it just like trills at all of the creative things that that make my brain go burr um so thank you uh thanks for being down for this mini series thanks for supporting uh me through this process i'm i'm so appreciative of you um this uh, amazing game is called Triangle Agency. It is a Kickstarter now out. Um, you can type exclamation point triangle uh, in the chat right now. Please go back this Kickstarter. It's like over 1,500% funded. They're doing bonkers things. I want more from this company, more art, more adventures, more everything. And if you like this game, please come back next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for another episode. Uh, we are doing a three-part miniseries um, with this, for, this being the first episode uh, and ending the night before the Kickstarter ends. Uh, our last episode is July 5th uh, and uh, next one next week on the 28th and then on July 5th uh, before the Kickstarter ends on July 6th. Um, we are going to go raid somebody awesome uh, to my wonderful uh, agents. Thank you so much for letting me rip your heart out uh, in the first episode. Um, and uh, yeah, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Uh, and I'm wishing, wishing you a tri week. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.